Woody's out there watching. Welcome to Brady Street Stadium on Discover Muscatine. Joel Krausar and Ben Nitzel as the Muscatine Muskies prepare to take on Davenport North. The Muskies 1-3 and three coming into this game, coming off a huge win last week against Davenport West. Face off against the North Wildcats at senior night at Brady Street Stadium. The 2-1 and one Wildcats suffered their first loss of the season, falling 21-0 to Bettendorf after beating Davenport West 21-0 earlier in the year and defeated Burlington 40-7. Ben, it's kind of that midway point of the season where teams start to jockey for seeding as we get into the playoffs as all teams qualify this year uh, this should be a pretty good ball game between two decent football teams yeah and i think you're talking about two teams that are really looking to do a couple things tonight right one is continue to refine what is it that they do well what is it that they need to improve upon as they start heading towards that playoffs as you said jockeying for position joel figuring out you know can we improve our seed can we get ourselves into a position to maybe even host a game uh, and then finally just make sure that they are getting better Better and get you know and, and improving and saying what is it that we need to do to try to be successful in the postseason previewing this North Wildcat team and one of their better starts in recent history. They're led by senior quarterback Zane Beebe, who fills in for the All-State All-District player Jack West, who has matriculated on to two-time defending national champ Morningside College. Zane Beebe now stepping in, 349 yards passing, a 60% completion percentage, and he's also their leading rusher, so clearly they, they run their offense through their dual-threat quarterback. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, you know, if you're going to run the pistol offense like they do with everybody spread out, you got to have somebody that can threaten to run, threaten to pass. And, I, you know, I think it's important for people to understand, too, this is not the Davenport North you remember from six or seven years ago. They've had some really, really tremendously successful sophomore teams and some varsity teams have been very competitive over the last four to five years. Really done a nice job with their program and really turned things in a positive direction. You know, it wasn't that long ago. It was like this was an easy W on everybody's schedule when you were playing the Wildcats. But, like I said, the last five, six years, this has been a very some very good football teams they put out there, run, do a nice job running offense, playing defense defense and they've always had scary athletes so just putting themselves in position to, to be victorious and you can feel it kind of at as you walk into the stadium there's a new energy that you feel from this north sideline and uh, they are excited about their wildcat team speaking of wildcats muscatine the last few weeks has really almost been more of a wildcat offense with eli gay at quarterback i wouldn't be shocked though if we saw more connor christensen tonight also at the quarterback position to uh, to try to push the ball down the field through the air bend but it's really been effective. Only seven uh, attempted passes the last two games for the Muskies, but over 300 yards rushing in both games for their offense. Well, I mean, you take one of your best athletes and you're putting the ball in their hands to start every single play. That's usually a recipe for some success. But to your point, as you get as you start heading off towards the playoffs, you've got to be able to put the ball in the air. There's going to be times where you're going to trail. And as we even saw a little bit in that last game, when all you're going to do is run the ball, team's going to start stacking seven for sure, eight, nine guys in that box. And daring you to throw the ball, and if you cannot threaten that throw, then they're gonna you're gonna have trouble running because there's just too many bodies and too many gaps. Again, Eli Gay stepping into the quarterback position for the injured Jake Draves, who broke his collarbone week two against Clear Creek Amana. The Muskies are hoping to have Draves back, though, for that playoff game. That's their goal. Also led receiving-wise, Prince Wee with nine catches and 91 yards on the season. Nolan Recker, the big tight end, doing some nice things in the passing game as well. But what's really been impressive the last couple of weeks, man, has been this offensive line for the Muskies. I rewatched that game last week. They absolutely did work against West. And those five guys, six guys who are rotating in up front are doing a nice job of pushing the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and you've got a lot of guys who've had varsity experience coming into this year that are doing a nice job living up to their potential. You know, they've put a lot of hard work in the weight room over the years, a lot of dedication. You're seeing that pay off on Friday nights as they move guys around and, and shift blocks. And some credit to the coaches too. I think they've done some scheming this year where they've put guys in positions where at high school a lot of, a lot of success can be had if you give guys good blocking angles. If you put them in a position to be able to make get a good angle on a kid and block him. I think the coaches have done a really nice job of putting kids in good blocking positions and then the kids' hard work and dedication is paid off to then follow, to take that position and to translate into a good block. And the defense last week also did well, pitching a shutout for uh, the Muskies against Davenport West. This is... This is the uh, the Discover Muscatine pregame show on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. We're going to quick take a 60-second break. We'll be back with more musky football. We're about two minutes from kickoff here on Discover Muscatine. Remove your hats for the plane of our... There's no place like home. 
and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home. And there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket. Welcome back to Brady Street Stadium, newly renovated. The exterior of the press box is looking fantastic here as well. Joel Krausar, Ben Nitzel with the call. We're ready for some musky football. Take on Davenport North tonight. And the musky team getting ready to come onto the field here as uh, they're getting ready to go. And I didn't see the coin toss at the beginning of the game. I'm not sure they had the coin toss yet. So we're not sure who's going to receive the ball. Um, and, and we've talked to this about a little bit, but with an offense like North, you know, 40 points in the first game, 21 game two, and then uh, really was with a defensive struggle in that Bettendorf game, uh, I can see them wanting to get their offense on the field as fast as possible if they can. Yeah, you didn't, never know what's in the minds of the coaches. Like I've told you before, I always like the defer, but different coaches, different ideas. So as the Muskies get ready to take on North, uh, we've had some swimming this week uh, on Discover Muscatine. I hope you guys are all tuning in to that, or volleyball as well. Um, and there will be some more maybe swimming to come. You can check out that schedule each week in the Discover Muscatine newspaper as North will receive the kickoff. I think they're going to kick. They're, they actually deferred their Joel. Okay. They're going to kick to the Muskies. I need to get my binoculars out. I apparently can't see as clearly as I thought. So the Muskies will start out with the ball. This, this field has been turned over and renovated. This whole facility significantly in the last few years, this field turf is absolutely brand new. It's just this is year two for it. And as a, as, a, as a former coach, this is the kind of surface that I really enjoyed coaching on and playing on. Uh, you just got more consistent uh, output from your team. Hopefully someday we can get this in Muscatine. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it, you know, obviously up here it's a huge issue because they have so much, so many games, uh, so much traffic onto the field that it makes a big difference. I mean, they were literally finishing this turf field at the start of our first game last year, so uh, it is brand new. Back deep for the Muskies will be David Wanty and Diego Rangel. Kicking off for North. Number four. So that's going to be... Get my roster out. And that's going to be Wanty who takes the kick at the 10 yard line. He goes up the right sideline, up the musky sideline, breaks a tackle. He's out over the 30, 35, 40, 45. He's pushed out of bounds just shy of the 45 yard line. Great return for David Wanty. Nice job by David there. Got some blocks and stayed with it. And got a nice job getting the ball out and putting the muskies in great field position. Isaac Griffiths kicking off for the Wildcats. And we'll see how the Muscatine offense comes out here. And it looks like he did step out before the 40-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from the Muskies, 37. Looks like Tim Nimley starting in the backfield there, Joel. So we see Tim back after coming back from uh, injury. Eli Gay in the backfield with Nolan Raker. The give is to Nimley, the all-time leading rusher in school history. And he is down. And he didn't like the extra hit that he took there on that play. Looked like slipped, maybe. 
So that's going to be a loss on first down for the Muskies. Good to see Tim out there, though. And we've got a warning now. It looks like the officials have kind of issued a verbal warning to both teams. And they're having a little uh, discussion with captains, trying to manage any sort of volatility that may be brewing here at the start of the game. So it'll be second and 14 from the Muskie 34. Yeah, good job by the officials there. Just get these guys under control. You don't want anybody taking a silly penalty here, especially early on. Eli Gay at quarterback. He's in the pistol. Uh, the give it to Emily, that's a fumble. And that's going to be that's North be, Ball. Yeah, turnover there on. Never got a handle on it. Coughed it up, and away we go. Here comes the ball for North. So an early turnover for the Muskies as North recover the fumble between the exchange of Eli Gay and Tim Nimley. And that's maybe just some rust of, you know, being off the field with injury for Tim and Eli maybe not getting a lot of practice time to practice that exchange. Yeah, it was hard, hard to say. I didn't get a good look at the exchange itself, but he never had a handle on it. He was bobbling it from his first step. So, you know, usually as a coach, I'm going to put that on the running back because the quarterbacks, especially in our offense, is looking to make a read. That running back's got to get himself in position to get that ball. And, uh, and if he's giving it, take it and secure it. So Zane Beebe comes out with two running backs in the backfield Tyson Hill and I believe Cade Sheedy and they give it to Hill and he picks his way up of a gain of three on the first down play well and that's a play there they take a little bit of advantage of TD's you know over aggressiveness he over penetrated they were able to cut behind him take him out of the play again sometimes that over penetration is as good as a block and that set up the three yard gain on what could have been a loss otherwise so fast tempo here for North as BB He's in the single back set of the quarterback with the give is to Cade Sheedy who bends back to the left. He breaks the tackle. And Sheedy with a gain close to the first down. Looks like he's going to be just short. It'll be interesting to see how North does handling the front of the Muskies here, too. I noticed they're going from a two-point stance, which, you know, is kind of collegiate level. But you, you, you start you just start higher. And so if the Muskies are down in their three- or four-point stance on the line, you wonder if we're going to be able to get underneath these guys and kind of drive them back and take them where we want them. Back to pass is BB. He swings it out to Sheedy. She's got Wanty in the open field, and Wanty, and uh, looks like that's look like David Dalby yeah, out there. David Joel. Dalby out there with the other uh, assisting on the tackle. So fast tempo again here for North. It'll be first and ten just outside of the twenty. Twins at the top of the screen as North is capitalizing off the turnover. The give is to Hill. And he's going to have a short game. Getting inside the 20 there. Looks like Muscatine's going with some man-to-man -man coverage. One by Tyson Hill. Nolan Mosier oh, now sniper. into the game. Nolan Mosier now into the game at quarterback. He's played a little bit this year. Empty formation. He's a big, tall uh, sophomore. Throws out wide. It's complete. Okay. Nice little throw and catch. Might have liked to get a couple yards on it, but... Makai Jacobs with the reception. Knocked out of bounds by Musty. We saw Mosier a little bit play on the sophomore team as a freshman last year. He's a big, strong 6'4", 210-pound sophomore. Mosier, he's throwing it. Oh, right throwing there. It right nice there, right to him. And it is there you go. And it was a bobble, so his knee was not down. And here goes Prince Wee. Turf Monster gets him. Prince with a big return off of the inter interception. Yeah, check the book depository there. Great play, though, Joel. He did a nice job of sitting on his route. It was a kind of an underthrown ball. He was right there, grabbed it, and away he goes. So Prince Wee, what the offense giveth, Prince taketh away and gets a big return, giving Muscatine great field position here with their second offensive series of the game. Well, and something the Muskies needed there. It looked like that was two down territory for sure for North, and we were having trouble stopping them. So great job by the defense to make something happen. So the Muskie offense comes out with Gay at quarterback. They give it to Nimley off right tackle. He's got open field, breaks a tackle. Tim is going. Gain of about 16 yards. Tackled by BB. That looks like some vintage Nimley there. Some shifty moves, some power. Great run. Or excuse me, that was Metro Cooper. That was Metro Cooper on the play. I, I missed the number. It was 26. So they go fast. Metro Cooper, he gets it over right tackle. 
And Mentor picking up right where he left off last week in the fourth quarter against West. Well, we've talked about it, whether it's Tim or Mentor. You've got you've got tremendous options back there. You've got guys who could both be a feature back in most offenses and, and just do a nice job running the ball. Both are shifty. Both have power. Uh, just great weapons for Coach Hawkins' offense. Second and six for the Muskies in North Territory. High snap, bobbled. Gay keeps it. He's got a lane. Eli Gay breaks a tackle. He's in the red zone. As Eli was almost broke free on that one. That'll be Muscatine's first trip inside the first National Bank of Muscatine red zone. First and 10 from the Wildcat 19. Great job by Xander Solfus on the pole there. Just kind of setting a point and giving somebody for Eli to run behind and turn into a big play. First down, Muskies. Gay takes the snap, gives it to Cooper. Cooper off right tackle. Jukes outside, met by the pursuit, and that's still a big gain on first down. Well, he just made it look so easy, too. It looked like a stroll in the park there. Just he was kind of, but he just, you know, great shiftiness with ability to play in his foot and go immediately. Nice run. The musky offensive line is firing off the ball again tonight. A lot better second series here out of the offense. Second and three from the Wildcat 12. Uh, give us to Cooper, and it looks like he's going to get the first down. So it'll be first and goal inside the 10-yard line. Muscatine just going right straight ahead on this drive. So many weapons for this Muscatine offense on the ground. Yeah, really, it's kind of pick your poison here in terms of what you want to be able to do. Cooper gets it inside. He's going to be met just over the line of scrimmage. Gain of about two. Seven minutes to play here in the first quarter. We're tied at zero. Muscatine fumbled on their first offensive possession, and then Prince Wee intercepted the ball inside the north 10-yard uh, line and returned it out almost to midfield, and that puts Muscatine now in the red zone with Eli Gay leading the offense. The give is to Cooper. He's going to go outside, and he tries to get all the way outside. And he is strung out. Makai Jacobs with the tackle for the Wildcats. Nice tackle there in the open field. A good perimeter defense there from the Wildcats, not allowing Cooper to get the edge. Split out wide for the Muskies. Xander Morgan, Prince Wee, and uh, David Dalby. Eli Gay in the pistol. He boots out right. And he's going to tuck it up and run. And he's going to get sacked. And that'll bring up fourth down and goal for the Muskies. And the field goal unit appears to be coming onto the field. Just too many Wildcats there out wide. Good effort by Eli, but he had three guys on him, nowhere to go. And they were able to corral him. On to kick is Diego Vitale. And what will be a... 29, 28-yard field goal. Connor Christensen with the hold. 540 and counting to play here in the first quarter. That's blocked. The kick is blocked. Uh -oh. And North will recover it. Great pursuit by the North defense there. Came in hard off the edge. Just took a little long. And again, that's some of those things where, you know, Diego's going to have a lot of kicks in front of him in his career here. But as a sophomore, you maybe have a little bit of a hesitation. And that's all they needed there to get off the edge. So North holds on defense and blocks the Muscatine field goal. First and 10 from the Wildcat 25, 24-yard line. Muscatine was able to flip field position. They certainly would have liked to have points there, though. Oh, absolutely. And we're going to have the officials time out here for the mandatory water break. So we're going to step away for 30 seconds. This is Musky Football on Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Thank you for your cooperation. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing. A family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week. Rivo Incorporated. Skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. 
Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. Welcome back to Brady Street Stadium. Muscatine Muskie football against Davenport North. We're tied at zero with 528 to play here in the first quarter. The 2-1 and one Wildcats against the 1-3 and three Muskies in a, 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 a rekindled battle of Mississippi Athletic Conference foes. Uh, ben, this is the week four for the Muskies, and they've had a couple hiccups here this first quarter, but the defense uh, helped them out this first time, and now the Muskie defense looks to stop North the second time. BB back in the quarterback. He swings it out to Makai Jacobs. Well, it looks, Joel, like he, you know Davenport North here, at least early, is going to try to play a real quick game here. They don't want to tangle too much with that front three for the Muskies. And so you see a lot of swing passes, getting the ball to the edge, and just trying to use some tempo and some wide plays to, to take away Muscatine's advantage. It's going fast here, and BB gives it to Sheedy, Cage Sheedy. Nice little tackle there by Nick Peterson on the edge. Peterson coming off a huge game last week. Junior Cade Sheedy up against senior Nick Peterson. Be third, and they are giving him the first down. So that was good enough for the first down. So 5-11 to play here in the first quarter. They BB's going to keep that one off the read, and he's met by the second level of the Muskie defense and TD, who's pursuing down the line. Well, and David Wanty there has got to get his shoulder in from the linebacker position. You cannot be a linebacker arm tackling. You got to stick your nose in and and deliver a blow there. Second and seven from the uh, Wildcats 35. Out to Makai Jacobs, and he is tackled for no gain, if not a loss, by Dalby. That's Dolby's expertise there is a one-on-one -on -one tackle, man. That guy does such a great job of getting up on his man, breaking down, making contact, and not letting go, just like a little bulldog out oh, there. Daddy did a nice job shucking the block. He's a well. very talented player. Sheedy and BB in the backfield. BB rolls out to his left. And he finds a receiver. We, we got, got a flag. Late flag. An eligible man downfield, maybe? Pass was completed to Quincy Wiseman. Pass complete to Wiseman. An eligible man downfield. So that will negate the completion to Wiseman. I don't know if it was a lineman who creeped down or if maybe Wiseman was covered up or, uh, or whatnot. But either way, it's a big break for the Muskies, making it third long. Yeah, they brought pressure that time, but North sort of was wisely was able to sprint their quarterback out by some time, and then he delivered a nice ball. 4.15 to play in the first quarter. We're all tied up at zero as North trying to move the ball in their second offensive possession of the game. BB and Sheedy in the backfield. Spread out to the right. Here's Sheedy attacks the line of scrimmage, looking downfield. He has a man, completes it, but out of bounds. Pass intended for Cameron Stokes. And a good defensive stop for the Muskies. Nice job by uh, by senior Reed Olsis there to be in his drop zone at 10 yards. And then as, as uh, the quarterback comes sprinting out towards him, he's able to come up, contain him, make him throw the ball away. Great job. So with fourth down, that'll bring in Peter Fan to punt for the... Wildcats with Diego Rangel back deep for the Muskies. There's the snap. The kick is end over end. And Rangel fair catches it, does a nice job to catch that ball. That's a that's some hidden yardage that he saved there quite a bit. Oh yeah. Hard and throw time though. Anytime you're diving <laughs> after a punt. Whoa. Great job by Diego though. Very, you know, very good athlete, nice hands, demonstrating it there. That's the sort of the catch that saves about 12 to 15 yards sometimes in field position. Nice job by the senior. So Eli Gay and Nimley in the backfield along with Nolan Raker. Prince Wee and Xander Morgan also. If they give it to Nimley, he breaks through the first level. Gain of about three on first down. Nice patience by Tim there. Reading where the hole was and turning that into a nice little gain for first down. Much better exchange between Gay and Nimley on that. You can tell that they were working on it on the sideline. 
So Eli Gay, a quarterback, he's got Nimley to his left. The fake to Nimley. Here comes Gay off the left side. He's got a blocker. He's got a seam. Eli Gay in the open field. A huge gain for Eli Gay. Well, that was a nice job by Eli there. He did not get a good handle on that ball to start with, so doesn't even bother giving it to Tim. Just keeps it himself, which he can do on the read there, and away he goes. Quincy Wiseman saving the touchdown for the Wildcats. We got a timeout. So we got the, the officials having a discussion. So I don't know if that's a, a, a warning type discussion. Typically a flag is thrown if you're issuing some sort of a warning. So hard to tell what happened there. Nevertheless, the play stopped. It'll be first and 10 for the Muskies at the 29 yard line of Davenport North. 3.15 to play here in the first quarter. Gay keeps it, he's off the left guard. Gain of about six or seven for the Muskie senior. And again, just having Tim back helps set that up. Two Wildcats tackling Tim when he didn't have the ball. So taking, taking more than his fair share of guys out of the play. Again, Nimley hasn't played since Pleasant Valley. He didn't play in the first two games. He is the all-time leading rusher in program history. Brings up second and three. And the give is to Nimley. And he's met in the backfield, but fights his way for a no gain. But that was a saved loss by the strong senior back. 2.30 to play in the first quarter. Second and that will be third and four for the Muskies inside the 25-yard line of Davenport North. A little bit of an equipment issue there for the Wildcats. Now Gay, he goes off right tackle. Slices up. He's going to have the first down and inside the red zone. Big play there for the Muskies. As Eli Gay enters the First National Bank of Muscatine red zone. Two minutes, seven seconds to play here in the first quarter. And Gay, he fumbles it. He picks it up, and he's got an opening. Eli Gay for the touchdown. Touchdown, Muskies. Nice job there. Way to, way to get some nice blocks, followed his blocks into the end zone. Friendly bounce off of this Brady Street carpet, too. That was a bobbled snap that Gay made something out of and went to the house. It's a big touchdown there for Coach Hawkins Muskies. Minute 56 to play here in the first quarter. Muscatine takes a 6-0 lead. Diego Vitale on to kick the extra point. His first field goal attempt was blocked. Bobbled snap, Diego. That should be a flag Fire there. drill. I thought he was offsides as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> you know, if you can come a second early, I think you're going to get a lot more blocks than normal. So the extra point will be no good for the Muskies. A minute 56 to play here in the first quarter. We're going to step away for 30 seconds. It's Muscatine Muskie football on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. Muscatine scoring on the Eli Gay run. Joel Krausar and Ben Nitzel here. Minute 56 to go in the first quarter. Muscatine leads 6-0. Diego Vitale to kick off for the Muskies. He kicks it short. 
Makai Jacobs fields it at the 15. He's going over the, the north sideline. He's got a sideline. Diego Vitale doing what a kicker should do. Push him out of bounds. Good job. Diego's a hard-nosed kid. I'm not surprised to see him stick his nose in there and make a play. He played that perfectly, had his angle, used that white sideline as his uh, extra defender, and just get him out of bounds. So it'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats at the 39-yard line. Just under a minute 50 to play in the first quarter. BB and Sheedy in the backfield. Oh, correction. That's Demarcus Haynes, who is going to get tackled for a loss. Good defense for the Muskies. Yeah, nice job of the Muskies. They're dropping into a little cover, too, keeping those corners locked up tight, maybe looking for that, that swing pass that's been hurting them a little early. And I like that call by Coach Hawkins. Just up the road at Tuval Stadium, Bettendorf trails Pleasant Valley 7-0 in the first quarter. It's the battle of the Premier Cities there, Joel. Who gets the title? BB, he's looking for... Ooh. I think he had Wilkins. Uh, Wiseman, excuse me. Wiseman was open there, overthrown, and a big stick there from who else? George Ocampo. Nice coverage all around by the Muskies. BB gets his offense lined up. Third and 10 for the North Wildcats. Drop back to passes, BB. He's got Wiseman in the seam. And it is caught. Well, and that's the problem there with that cover two. They were a little deep on that. He was able to run that pattern right underneath the safety and, and sort of run into that no man's land. So he's, he's, And there it is. There's the first down. First and 10 into Muscatine territory as Norris starts at the 40-yard line. Drops back to pass, swings it out to Wiseman, and Reed Olsis is there. Great job, great job by Reed. He was on the he was on pass coverage there. Drops his foot, plants it, comes up, makes the play. So Reed Olsis tackles him for loss. It'll be second and eleven. Bunch formation for the Wildcats. BB, he gives it again. Great stop, Demarcus Hare, Demarcus Haynes. Nowhere to go. Nope, TD was in on that one right there, got, it, got his hand on him, and that was all she wrote. Third and long, 25 seconds to go here in the first quarter. We may see North just take this down and move on to the second quarter. And that looks like that's what they're going to do. So Muscatine going to finish the first quarter here with a 6-0 lead over Davenport North. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. You're listening and watching Muscatine Sports on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. Welcome back to Muskie Football on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Beginning of the second quarter, Joel Krausar and Ben Nitzel on the call. Ben, really solid first quarter for the Muskies. Moved the ball on offense and uh, had a field goal blocked, but the defense has really been the story for the first quarter. Yeah, a little bit of the old Ben, but don't break there. You know, that first drive, North had their way a little bit, but came up with a big interception in return and has really just done a nice job here in, in stymieing what's been overall a pretty successful North offense this season. So North has the ball to be third and 15 from the Muscatine 45-yard line. Uh, Muscatine really adapting to the quick tempo of North. 
And uh, I think one of the things is not doing a lot of personnel changes and sub packages, they're able to keep up with this tempo. Yeah, I mean, you know, the nice thing in high school is you do keep a lot of the same players on anyway, so it doesn't always end up being such a big factor. But, you know, their conditioning is good. And big key here is going to be don't get your safeties too deep. Do not create that bubble beneath you that's going to give up the first down. Haynes, Sheedy, and BB in the backfield. BB back to pass. He goes into that seam, and he overthrows almost another interception. Dalby in the trail position almost got one there. Yep, and there was a little bit of a bubble there, but they were able to step up, and I think they had that one covered much better. Cameron Stokes, the 6'3 junior, the intended receiver, and it was well over his head. Peter pa Peter Fan, excuse me, on as the punter. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> he won't grow up. <laughs> Diego Rangel back to receive for the Muskies. Almost blocked. And he's going to feel that at the 10. He's got a little bit of the yards there. Nice job by Diego. Again, ball preventing that thing from, from you know, biting you. Where a lot of times you get kids, especially at this level, just let that ball go and roll, and all of a sudden you lose 15 yards. The Muskies at the Wildcat 15. But like you said, Ben, that's, that's maybe the difference in, you know, first and 10 from the two. Just catching that ball at the 10. Eli Gay brings the musky offense out. The give is to Cooper. Mentor Cooper gets out another huge gain on first down. Really doing a nice job running again tonight. Been very impressed with the mentor all year. And the inside blocking from center Cruz Schlees. Really creating some opportunities for that Muscatine offense. Give it to Cooper. He's going to have the first down. Nice little pull there by the Muskies. Caden Roberts coming through the hole. He's going to want to be just a little quicker. Very good athletic kid. If you can see if he can seal that inside back or just a little bit sooner next time. Brock Garrison doing a nice job in his right guard position as well. Eli Gay, first and ten. He's going to give it to Cooper, who's met in the backfield, but he breaks a tackle. He's going to try to make something out of nothing here, and North does a nice job in pursuit. Stayed and nothing. And a loss of four for the Muskies. Well, the Muskies doing a lot of pulling here on offense, and you saw North there ran kind of a defensive cut block where they just had that nose guard fire out and just create a pile, knock down the Muskie pulling guard, and then it was all, all hands on deck from that point on for the North defense. So Muscatine, second and 14, 10.30 to play here in the second quarter. Muscatine leading 6-0. Eli Gay fakes the handoff, and he goes over the left side. And he is stretched out, and that is BB coming up from his safety position. Well, and this is where it's going to be interesting, Joel. I mean, you know, we're in third and long here. This really feels obviously like a passing down situation. Are the Muskies able to pass it, or is this going to be another run? So I'll make it third and what seems like forever, third and about 20 on this play. Cooper and Gay in the backfield. Wrecker and Dalby out right. Here comes Prince Wee in motion. The give is to Prince Wee. Side. He tries to cut up and gain on the thread of the deep ball even on third and 16 you're able to stack eight nine guys in that box and it's just hard to run on that doesn't matter how athletic you are so the muscatine punt team will come on xander morgan to kick on fourth and 17 it's like peter fan is back deep to receive the punt he does it all in special teams joel north's going to come after this one Rugby kick. Yeah, the old the old Ack rugby Great kick there. Great punt by Xander Morgan. And a fair catch by Fan. So about a 38-yard punt by Morgan. It'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats from the 41-yard line. 
this is where you want to see a big stop from your defense. So, you know, your offense sputtered a little bit there, put themselves in bad position, had to punt. Norse getting the ball, nice field position. Really like to see the defense come out and do something here. Maybe bring some pressure from the edge. You got to think Norse going to want to keep that ball wide, not having a lot of success going up the middle. Again, I think we're really superior there in terms of size and speed. So can we protect the edges and get that ball back? Demarcus Haynes and Sheedy in the backfield. BB in the backfield to give us to Haynes. He bounces it back right. He's got some good blocking from the wide receiver position, and that will be a gain of about 11 on first down. Yeah, a lot of jersey out there wide. Yeah. A lot of jersey. Yeah, Wilkins, uh, excuse me, Stokes. He didn't have his hands inside the frame, to say the least. But nevertheless, it's first and 10 for North. No, that would, you should probably should have bought him some dinner there. <laughs> And the handoff is to Haynes. And TD meets him in the hole for a short game. Tongan Deason beating the double team and having made yet another tackle. Well, again, he's a force inside. He's, he's, he's physically superior to the guys he's going against. It's going to take two or, two or three North Wildcats to be able to block that kid. A state qualifier in the Iowa heavyweight division, class 4A wrestling, and uh, multiple offers to play college football as well. And there is BB making some, uh, creating a little bit. And he finds Quincy Wiseman downfield. That's a great play by that young man. I mean, Nick Peterson overrushed a little, did a nice job putting his foot in the ground, coming back and looking to make, he might have a play on him. BB squirted away, found the open receiver, and all of a sudden it's first down on what should have been a sack. So now the tempo picks up for, wet, or for North, excuse me. And the, BB's going to keep this one. And that's Nick Peterson on the tackle. Again, working those edges, working those edges. And again, sometimes in that in that three front, you've got a little bit of softness on those edges because on one side, you're probably bringing pressure, but on the other side, you're getting into a drop. And so, you know, can the Muskies adjust here? I think we're good up in the middle. Got to be able to take away some of that outside stuff. Just under eight to play in the first half. The give, that's Tyson Hill now in the backfield for North. For North. Well, and there you saw, again, a little bit of over-penetration by TD, and that is one of the things that when you're bigger and stronger than the guys you're going against, there is that temptation to just beat them so bad every time that you get upfield. Sometimes you're going to not make the play, and you're going to create a hole where you used to be. Third and two for the Wildcats inside the red zone. My old buddy Co Cody Charles used to always say, Joel, it's all about heel depth. All about heel depth. Well, a false start. <laughs> the center didn't snap the ball. Everybody else was going. They're going to call it on everybody else, but that's really on the center, even yeah. though he technically doesn't get the penalty. <laughs> There's no hiding from that one when that happened. No, no. So a break for Muscatine, and that's a five-yard penalty, making it third and eight. 7.15 to play here in the first half as the clock is ticking. Muscatine leading 6 nothing. See here, I would expect Norscott maybe a little bit of a sprint out, see if they can get BB going in some space where he can run or throw and be a little bit more dangerous. Haynes and Hill in the backfield. Bobbled snap, fumbled snap. BB keeps it alive, but he's got Rangel chasing him, and he just throws it away. Great pressure from the musky defense on the bobbled snap. Yeah, we were able to. It's a nice job capitalizing. They obviously had a miscue there, and you still got to put that pressure on and force them into a bad play, and the muskies were able to do that. Nice job by Rangel coming off the edge. That's going to make it fourth down, and this looks like four down territory for North. Fourth and eight from the 24. Three wide receivers right. As BB and Hill are in the backfield. So we got a timeout. We have a false start. False start on North, so another five yards back. And they're calling it an illegal snap, it looks like, based off of the instruction from this side judge here. It's interesting. So North Coast looks like they're going to stay with the. Uh Stay with the offense on the field. The musky defense catches the break. It's fourth and 13, 6.53 to play in the second quarter. We're at Brady Street Stadium on a beautiful night for high school football. BB drops back to pass. He's going down the seam. Oh, no. He's got, Will, uh, he's got Wiseman 
And Quincy Wiseman with a big game. First and that, down and inside the five. As a defensive coach, you just don't like to see that, Joel. We were man to man. I like the call there. Keep them covered up. We were covered, but you gave up, you know, the Muskies gave up the inside, and it's just a very, very simple post route. Easy throw, easy catch. You got to force those kids to go outside and make it a longer throw. Quincy Wiseman, a nice target at 6'2, 160 pounds. Ran a good route. Give us to Hill, and he's got nowhere to go. No, and again, that inside ball is going to be very difficult for North. Pleasant Valley leading Bettendorf at halftime, 9 0. Second down, Wildcats. So, second and goal, six minutes to play in the first half. BB gives it to Hill. Hill stretched out, and he's going to get tackled for a loss. Yeah, and I think Reed Olsis would love to have that one back. He kind of went with the grab instead of putting his shoulder in and biting the ball, and the guy kind of slipped free, and instead of being a two-yard loss, it ended up with maybe, what, a one-yard gain there? So they actually be, I think they actually got a loss there. Third and seven now for the Muskie, or for the Wildcats. Coach Hawkins is going to call a timeout, wants to coordinate his defense a little bit. 5.42 to play. We're going to take a quick break, 30-second break, on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. Welcome back to Brady Street Stadium. 5.42 to play in the first half. As Davenport North has third and goal from their own seven-yard line. And Ben, this is a huge defensive series for the Muskies. They had North and fourth and long. Huge completion inside the five-yard line to Wiseman for North. And the Muscatine defense now kind of bowing their neck. Again, bend, to, bend but don't break, trying to keep North out of the end zone. Well, and this is a tough spot for an offense like North. You're a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit faster, but you get in tight and you compress that field and it becomes very difficult to eat yards. We've had years for the Muskies where this has always been our Achilles heel. We'd rather be almost outside the 10 than inside it sometimes, right? So we'll see what they can do here. Obviously, I think it seems to me like two down territory. Um, so they've got two chances at it. We'll see what they try to come up with. So the Muskie defense... Looking to hold is BB in the shotgun. He drops back to pass, and he's going to be sacked. Reed Olsen's with a huge sack from the backside. No arm tackle there. A little dangerous out there, though, for the musky defensive backs. Again, in man-to-man -man coverage, which you would expect this close. That's a great call. But again, giving up that inside leverage, there was a possibility there. Luckily, Reed Olsen's put him under so much pressure, he didn't have time to see it. They had Tyson Hill coming out of the backfield on a little uh, scat route, trying to get the... Uh, so now we've got another clock issue. Clock has been an issue for the this, this head, the head official has been very frustrated. I'm just surprised to see that here in Davenport. So North on for the field goal is Isaac Griffiths. We'll try to kick it. The kick is up. And it's good. Three points for the Wildcats. Nice kick by that kid. It was a low snap, good holder, good holder got it on the tee, and the kick was up and good. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. And we're back at Brady Street Stadium. Joel Krause, our Ben Nitzel. It's musky football. 4.57 to play in the first half. Muscatine leading 6-3. Isaac Griffiths kicks off for the Wildcats. And that ball's going to roll into the end zone for a touchback. David Wanty couldn't quite handle the low line drive and a 
turns out okay. Touchback for the Muskies. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. You take the ball in the 20 there. So the Muscatine offense will take the field. Eli Gay leading the way at quarterback. I see Tim Nimley coming back onto the field. Uh, nice little rotation at the running back position for the Muskies tonight. Tim Nimley and Mentor Cooper both being very effective. Muscatine looking to put a long drive here together and try and get into the end zone. Again, 4.57 to play here in the second quarter as Eli Gay takes the snap with Prince Wee in motion. And Gay's going to keep it off the right tackle. And he bounces to the outside and gets some good yardage. Well, nice little job there on the edge. He had the Raker guy do a great job sealing, and then out of nowhere came Mason Beatty to smash that corner in, which really set it up the ability to make that into a, a nice little six-yard pickup on first down, which as an offensive coordinator, you're looking at second and four. That's a great place to be. Second and four, 448 to play in the second quarter as the Muskies continue their drive. Raker and Nimley in the backfield with Gay. A little movement up front by the Wildcats. Gay gives it to Nimley, and Nimley's met in the backfield. Yeah, they must have just not quite hit the neutral zone. As that is going to be a no gain and an injury. Uh -oh. two, two Muskies are down. And that is number 55 for the Muskies. Caden Roberts down. And so the Muscatine uh, athletic staff will be working with with Caden. So we're going to quick take a break. We're going to step away. We're going to go 90 seconds here. We'll take a break. 90 seconds on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. On a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll. And welcome back. Caden Roberts, the injured player for the Muskies. Uh, he was able to, to slowly walk off with assistance. So hopefully everything's going okay for, for Caden Roberts, this, uh, one of the offensive linemen for Muscatine. So third and five, 4.30 to play in the first half. Eli Gay, Tim Nimley in the backfield. Gay's going to keep it. He goes off right tackle and he's got a seam. And Eli will have the first down. We'll be interesting, too, to keep an eye on this right side here. What they've done is they've taken junior Brock Garrison and slid him over to that left tackle spot uh, and then brought in uh, TD and put him in at the right guard. So you'll have uh, TD and Xander Stolfus there at the uh, right side. Should be a lot of power. We'll see if they're able to run a little bit more on that side now. And TD has played a significant snaps at the offensive line this year. They've been rotating him in. So it'll be first and 10 yeah, there's for a couple, the Muskies. A couple of 175-pounders out there on the defensive line that cannot be happy campers right now. Snap to Gay. They give it to Cooper. So Cooper's going to have a short gain on first down. 
Positive yards on first down and also keeps the clock moving for the Muskies. 3.40 to play here in the first half. So Muscatine with Wrecker and Cooper in the backfield. Beatty and Huber and Wee out wide. Fumbled snap and Cooper is going to fall on it. That snap looked pretty good to me. I'm going to have to put that one on the quarterback there. I think Eli just had a lot to do on that play. Maybe took his eyes off the ball a little bit and got plunked right in the face mask. So that'll be a loss of about five on the play. It'll make it third and 12 from the north 31-yard line. Three minutes to play in the second quarter. Beatty, Huber, and Wee out wide. And uh, Eli's going to keep it and go over the naked bootleg. But Cade Sheedy had none of it. He was right there. Yeah, nice job by Davenport North there, sitting on that, keeping outside contained, and that was all she wrote for Eli on the edge. So fourth and 12 now for the Muskies that should bring on the punt team. And, and uh, the other thing, though, Caden Roberts is also the, the starting long snapper, and they're going to go for it here. Muscatine's in their standard offensive formation. I'm Maybe a little, little, little quick kick here. So Eli Gaze, they've, they've now, now North brings out. their guy North up. Brings their now they brought their guy up. What are they? Okay. And so now Muscatine calls a timeout. They <laughs> had what they wanted. There was no deep man for them for the Wildcats. But Muscatine's going to call a timeout. And this is a critical juncture. If you're not 100% sure you know it's going to go your way, that's a good timeout by Coach Hawkins. Yeah, and I think maybe we just felt like we were getting a little too uh, a little too creative there. And so uh, take the timeout, get your straight punter in, and, and bomb this thing down the field yes. and put your, all, your defense in the best position they can be in. And, uh, well, part of the issue, though, too, is, you know, you do have your backup long snapper. And maybe there's, a, I'm not saying that it's a confidence issue, but if, if you're not confident in the, in the number two snapper getting it back the 17 yards or whatever on the, on the punt, that could be a factor as well. Well, you've only, and you know, people have to realize in high school, you've only got so much time to practice stuff. So you know, there's only so many reps to go around and you've right. got a couple hours of practice. And so, you know, your, your, your second and third guys are not always going to get as many snaps as you want to feel comfortable with them being able to do a job. And that's where an industry like with, with Caden can be massive because you you got a really solid, phenomenal guy, and all of a sudden, you know, he's not available, and you don't know how many snaps the next guy up's gotten. And Crew Schleesman is the center, and now North's going to call a timeout. So Muskies came out showing an offensive formation. North was not prepared for that, and they you know, they want a timeout. You're right. So we've got major chess match going on right here. Both teams using timeouts without any time running off the clock. Yeah, it, that, that might be a little bit... Um, Maybe it's checkers. Kind. Maybe this is a checkers match right now with the uh, with the timeouts. But <laughs> it's fourth and twelve from the Muscatine thirty-one. But again, I mean, hand it to the Muskies. You come out, you, you show offensive play. I think that they could have easily, you know, it'd be interesting to see. I, I, I would be shocked if they ran offensive play there. They could have. Uh, but, you know, Coach Hawkins is ready to snap back into into the quick kick formation and punt it away. And Eli, you know, tremendous athlete. I'm sure he can kick the ball well and see what happens. And North had to burn that timeout. Again, to your point, on the flip side, right, if you can get a good field position here, if you can get an extra 10, 20 yards, down the field as opposed to going back towards the end zone. That can make the difference between getting points or not for North. So they, they've got to burn a timeout and make sure they're in a position to stop what's going to happen here. So with 2.15 to go in the second quarter, North trying to get the ball back, and they will also receive the ball at the beginning of the second half. So now here goes Eli back. And North is deep. not going to there respond. There is no one back deep. So the Muskies. Rugby punt to the bottom of the screen here, it looks like. Sprint him out a little bit, get him snap. in motion. And he's going to get the kick off. End over end kick. And he gets a little bit of a musky roll, but it might have touched Muscatine off the bounce. Doesn't look like it. Well, the, the, the back judge did throw his beanbag up around the, the, four to the 38, so they're going to call it an illegal touch up there, which I never understood why they call that illegal touching, but it's just downing the ball. So it'll be north ball at the 39-yard line. First and 10 with two minutes to go. Two minutes and four seconds here in the fourth, in the second quarter, excuse me. This is a big defensive series for the Muskies wanting to avoid giving up points and then having to kick the ball back to North. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I think, you know, North had a nice little drive last time. Can we shut them down here? 
Hill goes in motion. That's a backwards pass. And Reed Olsen is able to get off his block, and he's also given some help by uh, by Dalby out on the edge. And they keep the, the runner in bounds, so the clock should still be rolling. So Dixon with the catch, and Beebe leading the Wildcat offense just shy of the 50-yard line. He's going to pass it. He's got Wiseman again, and Wiseman breaks a tackle. Wiseman's making a living in the middle of the field this this evening. Yeah, nice little job there. Nice catch and run, and just you know, a little we're a little soft, like you said, in, in that middle. We got to figure out a way to kind of shut that down. They're running that that skinny post. Again, it's, it's a shorter pass. It's an easier pass for the quarterback to, to throw. Still a nice pass. Take nothing away from him, but Muskies have got to lock that down. Under a minute 20 to play in the first in the first half. BB rolls out to his left. He's got Wanty giving him pressure, and the throw is complete, and that should be in bounds. And that is it. He is taken down in bounds. So that's the clock just a, is still running. That was a great play all around. Nice throw. Great catch on the on the sideline there by the North kid. And then Jorge Ocampo, George Ocampo came up and just laid the wood on him. Nice, clean hit. Great play by all those kids. So under a minute to play here. North with two timeouts. Not calling one there. Second and nine, second and eight. As BB with the pressure. He's going for Wiseman again. But BB took a shot from Diego Rangel. Nice job by Diego to come in there and, and put the pressure on. And nice coverage at the back of the field there by, by the Muskies as well. Prince Wee was all over him. There'll be no easy completions on that down. 42 seconds to play in the first half. Third and nine for the uh, for Wild, the Wildcats. The Muscatine defense looking to hold. And you got to think this is probably, with the time and everything, a two-down situation for the Wildcats. So be interesting to see if they try to get a chunk here or if they go for the home run ball twice. BB sprints out right, throwing the corner route. Intended for Wiseman. Good coverage by Wee. Yeah, and that throw was nowhere close. Good job by Wee. There was nothing there anyway, but... Wiseman was going to need about a 20-foot extension ladder there to grab that one. So it is fourth and nine, 38 seconds to go here in the first half. As Muscatine leading north, six to three. Muscatine scored on an Eli Gay touchdown in the first quarter, and North kicked a field goal by Isaac Griffiths here with about five minutes to go in the second quarter. BB back to pass. Again, great pressure from the Muskie defense. Incomplete. Muscatine will turn the Wildcats over on downs. And BB felt the pressure those last three plays. Well, and they got something figured out in the backfield there, too. A lot better job of taking away that, that post route and not leaving Wiseman wide open in the middle. So, you know, a little bit of, a, of coverage, a little bit of pressure, and all of a sudden they've got nothing going anymore. So the Muskie defense answers the bell after they punt and turns the Wildcats over on downs. It'll be Muscatine ball with 32 seconds to play in the first half. Inside Wildcat territory. It'll be first and 10 from the 26-yard line. Eli Gay and Mentor Cooper in the backfield. This is going to be a quarterback sweep over the right-hand side. And Eli Gay's got the sideline, and there he goes to the 50, over the 50-yard line. Eli Gay with a huge run on first down and stops the clock. Nice little call there by the Muskies. Just kind of stacked the short side of the field. Got a lot of blockers over there. Used uh, Eli's natural athleticism and balance to be close to the sideline and still stay in bounds. And great little play there for the Muskies with 26 seconds left and looking dangerous. And the Muskies can strike fast with a number of players in the backfield. First and 10. 13 seconds to go on the play clock. I'm thinking Muscatine may be calling a timeout here. Yeah, you'd they're, hate under, they're under 10 on this play clock here. You'd hate to have to do that. Uh-oh. And Muscatine does call a timeout. And that was a, that was a jumbled mess. Yeah, that's a costly <laughs> timeout there. You, you do a nice job of getting the big gain. You get out of bounds, so the clock's not even going to start once the ball's placed, and then you still end up burning a timeout here. It's just That's a tough one, especially for a team that wants to run the ball. So 26 seconds to go here in the first half. Muscatine uses a timeout. They still have one there out of timeouts, according to the scoreboard. So that was the last timeout for the Muskies. First and 10 
at the Wildcat 47-yard line. Ben, this is a Muscatine trying to get into this field goal range, maybe? Diego Vitale had one blocked earlier and an extra point uh, also disrupted. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta think they're not feeling great about their field goal kicking. Now, if it's you know, if you got seven seconds left and you're 30 yards out, you might just give it a shot anyway to see what happens. But North's been very effective there on the special team. So, you know, I don't know. I think again, maybe set something up a little bit, get the ball to the outside, see if your athletes can make something happen, and try to score from this range. So the Muskies. Looking to score here at the end of the first half. 26 seconds to go. Get another beautiful night for high school football here at Brady Street Stadium. Davenport North, Muscatine, what could be one of the last kind of warmish weekends of the year. The cold is coming, and it looks like next week is when it's going to hit us. I'm excited, Joel. <laughs> My habitual sweater. Eli Gay sprints out to the right. He throws it. That's going to be intercepted by Quincy Wiseman. Just hey, I like seeing us throw Lee. a pass, though. Yeah, kept him honest. I think Wiseman, that's the spot to do it. Wiseman able to, to track that down and intercept the ball at the 26-yard line. So 20 seconds to go here in the first half. North does have two timeouts. And we'll see what the, the coaching staff for North tries to do here. They have had some uh, some positives throwing well, the ball down the field but it's usually been in the middle of the field so that's where those two timeouts are important yeah you want to you want to loosen your guys up here i talk about those gaps underneath the safeties but this is the time where you kind of want to have a gap you don't want somebody falling down costing you here you're looking for trick plays exotics double moves and pass rush is important sheedy or bb back to pass good pressure from the muskies as they drop eight into coverage and Nick Peterson and Anthony Sanchez meeting at the quarterback. Well, nothing exotic there. That was just the old four verticals. Let's try to get downfield and see if we can beat somebody. And great job to the Muskie defense of, of keeping their coverages, not, draw, not having anybody get beat. And then meanwhile, to your point, putting pressure on and making them get rid of the ball. And they, North Wildcats have seen enough of BB getting hit on dropping back the pass, and they line up in the victory formation, and they're just going to take a knee and go into half down 6-3. to three. Great first half here for the Muscatine defense. The offense has done some nice things. We'll talk a little bit more about it. We're going to take a break, though. We're going to see you in three minutes on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. 
Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. There's no place like home and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. Welcome back. It's Joel Krause, our bed at Brady Street Stadium. It's halftime on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. The Muscatine Muskies leading Davenport North 6-3. to three. And man, what's really been a pretty good half of football. Muscatine with a big turnover on their first series. Turning the ball deep in their own territory. And then Prince Wee taking it right back and then returning it out over the uh, over the 45-yard line. It's really kind of been, you know, body blow for body blow for both of these teams. And Muscatine right now leading on the scoreboards. Yeah, good first half for the defense on both sides of the ball. The offense has had some success moving between the, the red zones there, but you know some sputtering once they got inside the red zone on, for both sides, and uh, we'll see if we get some more offensive fireworks here in the first, second half. Well, and some of that a little bit is to Muscatine's not inability, but focus on running the ball because of their Wildcat offense, you know, with some injury to Draves in the week two. So their, their offense has kind of shifted a little bit, and that threat to not throw the ball uh, or not, where defenses are, are, are daring them to throw it, so to speak, uh, it, it shrinks the field. And, and subsequently, also, North really having no effect in the running game right now. And when that field shrinks, it's harder for them to throw it. So both defenses doing a nice job of making both teams one dimensional so that they can really tailor their defense to stop that one dimension. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a lot of what we saw there in the first half. And so I like seeing the pass at the end of the half. I hope that coach doesn't stay away from it just because of the interception. I mean, obviously, there at the very end of the half, You've got the defense spread out. They're trying to prevent the big play. A lot more guys in coverage. That's always going to be a tough situation to throw the ball. And so hopefully we'll throw it a little bit. Just keep him honest and create some space because when he gets the ball, Mentor's running really, really well. Tim Nimbley's had a couple nice runs where he was one guy away from breaking a little bit open. And, of course, Eli is always dangerous. It's nice to start the ball with him. Yeah, and Eli with the touchdown run uh, in the first quarter, which is proving to be the lead for the Muskies. Uh, that's really kept everything going and, and we're having to respect the quarterback run. And then, like you said, having two of the better backs in program history in Cooper and Nimley, Nimley being the all-time leading rusher in the program, uh, having him back tonight just makes it so much harder uh, for a defense to figure out who's going to be getting the ball. So the Muskies 
playing some good offensive football, but playing lights out defensive football tonight. Special teams could be the deciding factor as we look at the second half. And again, North will receive the opening kickoff. We're going to take another quick break. We'll be back in two minutes. And who knows, maybe we'll talk some of the concession stands in the Mississippi Athletic Conference as part of our Discover Muscatine halftime show. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. And welcome back to Brady Street Stadium. It's halftime. Joel Krausar and Ben Nitzel. It is halftime at Brady Street. Muscatine leading Davenport North 6-3. to three. If you look at the records coming into this game, a lot of people may have thought if you were handicapping high school football, which we're not degenerates, so we don't do. But North may have been picked as the favorite in this game. And right now, Muscatine controlling the line of scrimmage of both offensive and defensive football and leads the Wildcats 6-3. to three. Ben... We get to travel, and we for most of our adults and you know late teenager lives, we've traveled around the Mississippi Athletic Conference in Eastern Iowa. We were kind of having a, a little joking discussion before we came on the air about best concessions in the in the Mississippi Athletic Conference, and uh, you know with with COVID, the concession stands are being used, but it's all prepackaged food, which is the right thing to do. But we've missed some some of the traditions in the conference that way. Absolutely, I I think it's. Uh... Uh, disappointing. What's your go-to if you if you get to pick one school? Now, Burlington will include them because they are in the Mississippi Athletic Conference that we grew up with. However, they have defected and they've been replaced by Central DeWitt. But uh, what's the best concessions you've encountered? Yeah, no, that's Burlington, hands down. I mean, they got the tremendous walking tacos. Really great. And I like the walking tacos down there, too, because they don't use Doritos. You don't need all that extra flavoring in the walking taco. It's just a straight chip. It's a nice size bag. Great meat combination. They do a lot of things well down there at the pit, and uh, hands down best concessions by far. I was not prepared for the wrong hot take of no Doritos for the walking taco. I think you need the Doritos for the walking taco, and you and I are maybe just going to have to agree to disagree. Yeah, I mean, on, I on think that topic. that's fine. I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't feel like you're arguing from a very strong point there, but that's yeah. I mean, it, if to good, me, if good taste is not a strong point, then I guess it's not a strong well, point. If you're using Doritos, it's the question becomes, what are you covering up for? <laughs> Now, if you're looking at specifics, you want to talk about best popcorn in the MAC Conference, that's easy. you got to go up to Lancer Stadium there at North Scott. Tremendous popcorn. and, and they give you a nice size. Not overdo it on the butter. Really like North Scott popcorn. And we were there earlier this year, and I believe you got some, didn't you, while we were up there? Or were, or were you not able to pick some up? No, I, yeah, I got some. I don't know how you go to the you know best popcorn in the MAC and don't get some. I, I certainly partook a little bit of that. Um, so, yeah, I think those are, your, those are your two best bets. Now, if you want to go most eclectic, now this isn't really in the MAC Conference, but if you go to Kingston Stadium, See, they, they actually it. serve mid-continent products. So you can get RC Cola at a game, which is, <laughs> I, I, every time I get there, I think it's 1942. Uh, but that's, so that's interesting. That was a big eye-opener to me when we started playing some of those out-of-conference games about seven, eight years ago that they had that there. So you can get the RC Cola at Kingston. Another One of the things that's been nice about the, the change to Iowa High School 4A football is we get to see some of the stadiums that we didn't see as, as youngsters growing up. You know, whether it's uh, going down to Atumla, which uh, has, I, I agree, but they, they, they're still, it's a different different way. We still of have that concrete there. pier that's about four yards from the, I can't believe someone's never broken their back on that thing. But going to Trojan Stadium at Iowa City West, and uh, but with COVID, it's changed 
the schedule. Uh, Muscatine was supposed to be playing at Indianola, I believe, this week. And we're back in the friendly confines of Brady Street Stadium with the adjusted schedule. And a big, big matchup here between the Muskies and the North Wildcats as North starts to come back on the field. A little update from Tuvel Stadium. Uh, Bettendorf had a 56-yard touchdown run. They missed the extra point to get within two points, or three points, excuse me, as Pleasant Valley was leading nine to six. But Pleasant Valley just rips off a 61-yard touchdown run, and they take another lead, uh, a bigger lead, excuse me, just up the road in that big rivalry between Pleasant Valley and Bettendorf. Yeah, very marginal food there too. I'll be honest with you at Tuvel Stadium. They usually selling some kind of some kind of fancy pantsy tacos outside, which I'm a big taco guy, but they're not that good and they're overpriced. And you get in the concessions and they're just <laughs> for a premium city, it's a little lacking. Joel, I'll tell you that. Well, the other thing too, the uh, debate that probably we are not have enough time to litigate is the whole Quad City style pizza phenomenon. I know that there are, it's a polarizing topic in the Eastern Iowa and uh, I'm not sure that we're prepared for such a debate. So with two minutes to go here at halftime, we're going to take another quick break as we wait for the Muskies to come back on the field. It's the Discover Muscatine halftime show on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the community's college.
Welcome back to Brady Street Stadium. Joel Krausar and the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. We're getting ready to kick off the second half as Davenport North trails Muscatine 6-3. North will receive the opening kickoff as the Wildcats looking to, to get their offense rolling. Huge thank you to our broadcast sponsors this evening, our fan cam presented by Healthy Smiles Family Dentistry. Good student section turnout tonight for the Muskies. First National Bank of Muscatine bringing you our Red Zone sponsorship and just supporting Muskie Athletics all year round. Rivo Inc. Plumbing and Heating will have our play of the game at the end in our postgame show. And the Bear of Muscatine Offensive Player of the Game and our Eastern Iowa Community College Defensive Player of the Game. And again, also brought to you by River Rehab, Physical Therapy, and Pearl City Construction. Also, a huge thank you to Muscatine Community School District for allowing us to, to stream these broadcasts for you. Make sure you follow the Muscatine Community School District on social media. Lots of great things going on in our community, and they will keep you abreast of everything going on as we get ready to kick off the second half here of Muskie football as Diego Vitale will kick off for the Muskies. Vitale, he kicks it, and this is going to be a short kick, and that is a live ball. Muscatine unable to get on it. A nice play there by the North up back. Number 21, Jaden Noriega did a good job of fielding that ball. So the Muscatine defense will come out with North taking the ball at their own 38-yard line. We'll see if North continues to try to drive the ball down the field through the air. Their first couple of drives, they were focusing on the run, and then they really went to the pass as Zane Beebe, the senior quarterback, comes out with two backs in the backfield. Beebe's going to swing it out. Again, that's complete to Dixon, and he's got it in an opening. And Dixon will have a first down there on the swing pass. Again, a lot of space on the outside there, Joel. Rangel coming up with a George Ocampo to push him out of bounds. And the tempo picks up. Just over the 50-yard line at the Muskie 49. Here's the screen out to Wiseman. Wiseman cuts back. And he is met by Ocampo. Cut down by Ocampo is more like it. And a good job by uh, this is, looked like Dolby again, forcing the the play inside where his pursuit defense was. So Dixon, it's a backward pass. He catches it and he is met. That looks like David Wanty. Yeah, Wanty with a big stick, short gain. Well, he just didn't get wide enough there, Joel. Kind of through the backwards pass. He just wasn't out wide enough. And the Muskie linebackers are able to rally up and make a play there for no gain. So North coming out here with their quick passing game. Trying to get the ball into their receiver's hands in some space where they can make a man miss. And some good tackling on display for the Muskies. Third and seven from the 46-yard line. We have a flag here. False start on North. I didn't see it. It looked like there may have been a flinch on the right-hand side of that offensive line. Hard to see. You mentioned that two-point stance. We're seeing more and more spread-type teams do that. And is the thought process they can see the defense better? Is that why they're doing that? I guess. I, you can see you're maybe in a little bit better position to pull. I don't personally like it. I think you sometimes got to be able to fire out and get low. Low usually wins. Um, maybe sometimes you just got guys that don't like getting down the stance either. Third and 12 for Zane BB and the Wildcat offense. BB back to pass. He's flushed out of the pocket, rolls right. He's got a man open right at the sticks, and that's going to be a completed pass. Let's see if the mark is good enough for the first down. A nice catch by that kid out there. Tippy toe on the sidelines, hauling the ball short, in. and Short of the line to gain. That was Isaac Griffiths with the catch. So the kicker doing some nice footwork along the sideline. See if they go on two here, try to get the Muskies to jump. Fourth and one. It looks like they that's almost they do. tried. It's 10-28 to play here in the first and the third quarter, excuse me. Zane Beebe gives it to Sheedy, who breaks through the line, and now he's got some room to go. Kane Sheedy down the right sideline. 10, 5, 
He's going to be just short of the goal line. Cade Sheedy with a huge run on fourth down. Well, and this junior David Wanty not happy with himself, visibly upset. He had a chance to hit him early in two yard gain and missed it. And nice kid by the she nice move by the Sheedy kid, and away he goes and almost punches the ticket there. Cade Sheedy takes it down to the two. It'll be first and goal for the Wildcats. Ten minutes, ten seconds to go in the third quarter. BB's going to keep it. Fumble. He fumbles. It's musky ball. That is going to be. It's going to be at the one, though. <laughs> <laughs> about the one inch line. Yeah. I mean, that was about as close as it could be without being a touchback. But it's still muscatine ball. They get the turnover as muscatine. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's still better to have the ball. At oh, your, for sure. No, for line, sure. That's. That's as close as you can get to the end zone without having it be a touchback. Nice job. I didn't see who it was on the Muskies, but got their hands in there, ripped that ball loose, and he coughed it up, and good job by the defense for covering Another timely turnover for the Muskies when Davenport North was in a scoring position. Mentor Cooper in the backfield with Eli Gay and Nolan Raker as Eli Gay comes in at quarterback. The give is to Cooper, and he breaks it. Cooper in the field. That's going to be a huge gain, 12 yards to get out of the shadow of their own goalpost. Mentor Cooper, huge run. Well, and more importantly than the 12 yards and the first down, which are both great things, it's just, as you said, getting out of, the, that, of your goal line and getting yourself in a position where now you can open your playbook back up. Eli Gay fakes it to Cooper, goes over to left tackle. Eli Gay now into the secondary for North. That's a gain of 11 for the Muskie quarterback. Bang, bang. What a gut punch this would be for Davenport North if the Muskies can turn this into points after what should have been points for the for the Wildcats. Muskie team trying to go 99 yards, going quick tempo. The give is to Cooper. He goes out wide. He breaks the tackle. And now it's a big broken tackle because that's a gain of three as opposed to a loss of one. Well, and big props to Mason Beatty there at the bottom of your screen on that play. He wanted to block that kid in the back so badly he could taste it, and he restrained himself, didn't pick up the, the silly penalty. Great, smart heads-up play by that kid. Just let it roll, and now it's second and six instead of second and seven instead of being first and 17. Second and seven from the north 29-yard line. Muscatine with their first possession of the second half, turning north over at the one-yard line. Eli Gay and Metro Cooper in the backfield. The give is to Cooper. He goes off right tackle, breaks it up, and runs hard and carries the pile for what looks to be a first down. Great leg drive by Mentor there, just to keep pumping, 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 and making that thing into a first down. Individual will right there. Running hard behind that offensive line of Xander Stolzfus, TD, Tongue and Decent, Cruz Schleesman, Brockert. And Alex Edwards at the other guard position. Bunch formation to the left. They give it to Cooper, and Cooper's met in the backfield. Well, in that time, I don't know if it was fatigue here or what, but our line let us down a little bit, Joel. The pole was not crisp, a little slow, and just kind of pansy footing around. Devontae Hicks, the six foot, 260 pound defensive tackle, able to penetrate and tackle for loss. 8.15 to play in the third quarter. 2-12 for the Muskies. Tight bunch at the top of the screen. Eli tries to sprint out left. He cuts it back up. He's going to get a few yards. That's a gain of about three, making it a third and a little bit more manageable. So this is that kind of uh, tricky down and distance here for the Muskies. Third and long. You know, is there, there's no... Uh, magic bean here to, to, to make this beanstalk grow uh, for the Muskies. No, I mean, the nice thing is the ball's in the middle of the field, right? So you got equal threat to both sides. But yeah, unless we can establish a little bit of a passing game, these are just going to be tougher downs where you're really relying on a bit of a home run run. Gay gives it to Wrecker, and they're not expecting that. And he drives the pile. He's going to be just short, but that's a nice little fullback trap play on Nolan Wrecker, who doesn't get the ball typically in the running game. No, I mean, you've got so many other big weapons. And, I mean, this kid's a very good athlete. So, again, if we're not going to throw the ball, you do want to find ways to get him the ball. Nice play call there by Coach. It's a good little decoy that almost worked. Makes it fourth and one, and here comes the punt team for the Muskies. Xander Morgan back deep to punt. And no one back deep for the Wildcats. No, nope, they're really they're really struggling on the punt situation here. Daddy! 
snap is good to Morgan. Ooh. And the punt we goes off the out. side of his foot. And it checks back like a, like a sand wedge. And that's only going to be about a 13-yard punt. That's a tough one for Xander. He's a lot better punter than that. And, he'll you know, that happens. Just came off, like you said, the side of his foot. Then he got an unfortunate bounce at the end. He'll come back and blast the next one. There was some good pressure from North on that, too. And it'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 41-yard line. So not the cap you want to that drive there, Joel, but I'll tell you, again, if you think back to about five minutes ago, it looked like North was in imminent danger of scoring on us. We're able to get the turnover, drive the ball, switch field position a little bit. Um, again, would like to cap that thing with some points, really put the dagger in them, but I'm sure Coach Hawkins and the Muskies will take take this over what it looked like it was going to be. And actually, I'd go back and look at that replay. I I think this is a bad spot um, if, you're, if you're a Davenport North fan. So it'll be first and 10 out the 37 yard line. Good thing we're not. Yep. BB back, throws it in the slot to Wiseman who is met by George Ocampo. Good catch by that young man, but he might be thinking about it next time he's asked to do yeah. that. George just buzzsawed him there. Again, you know, a little soft in that middle. That post has been open for him more often than not, but George did a great job of planting his feet coming up and very clean legal hit and just smashed the guy. That's what you want out of your safety. Shane Beebe leading the Wildcat offense. He swings it out to Dixon. Dixon bobbles it, and he is met by David Wanty. Good stick by that young man. You know, they've, they've run that a couple times. Now, that time the pass was forward. A couple times it's been backwards. You wonder if they're going to try to set up here at some point. Maybe a um, little double pass action. Joel, have you figured out what's going on with these cones? The cones are actually, they are the, you cannot sit in the rows with the cones in the stand. But to me, it looks like every row has a cone. So that is swung out to Dixon. Uh, I, it does look like they are every other from my vantage point. Okay. I'll get the binoculars out at our next break. I see, okay, now I see what you're saying now. I see what you're saying now. And you can see it on this home sideline too, it's that way. All right. So that's a first down for the Wildcat. Again, this is the new COVID regulations with making sure everyone social distance is in the stands. BB gives it to Hill. Hill cuts up the field. That's a gain of about eight on first down. Nice little run there by North. 5.26 to go here in the third quarter. Muscatine leading six to three. North trying to get some momentum here on offense. So as Zane Beebe gets the sign in from his, his coaching staff, two wide receivers right, two wide receivers left, Hill in the backfield. Beebe drops back to pass, a little pump, throws the rocket screen to Wiseman. Wiseman coming all the way back across, and Reed Olsis stays home, and they're going to get a block in the back. They did get a block in the back call. Boy, I tell you, as a Muskie fan, I like seeing the flag, but as a neutral observer, that was a real rough call yeah, on that, that kid. Was... I thought that was a nice block by Davenport North. It wasn't violent. He yep. saw him coming. I thought he got to the front of him. And, and we may have the, the, the head official, the white hat, who also had a vantage point of that. They're having a discussion. Maybe they might. I wouldn't be surprised if they wave this flag off, Ben. I'd have to say that would be the right call if they do. Nick Pearson tried to make a play there, put his cleats in the ground and came out onto the, and tried to come out and, and get Wiseman. Wiseman just a little too quick, moving the other direction and tried to get cut back across the field, picked up a nice little block, uh, which ended up spurring the penalty, but nice athletic play. They do call it a block in the back. They hold the penalty. So the, 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 the side judge must have seen enough and had enough to justify his case for throwing the flag. So that's a big that's a big break for the Muskies. From our vantage point, I'm with you, Ben. I wasn't sure if that was the right call. So that's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And that will make it second and 27 for the Wildcats. And if you're the Muskie defense, the question you gotta be asking yourself is where is Wiseman? Wiseman, number 22, has been the big play receiver for North. This would be a time where you might, again, and I don't know, maybe their running back can't throw the ball, but this would be a time where you might consider the old double pass, uh, swing that guy out like you've been doing, make sure it's a backwards lateral to him, and let him see if he can get somebody streaking down the field. Second and 23 for North. As... BB gets his offense set. 
Wiseman in the slot there. They give it to Hill on the draw, and he is met by the Muskie defensive front. <laughs> Coach Dwayne Big Cat Williams excited to see his guys stop that for a loss. Well, who wouldn't be? That looked like they knew what the play was. That was a great job by the Muskies there. Forward progress makes that a loss of one. It'll be third and 24 from the uh, North 45. Just under 420 to play in the third quarter. Well, and you're throwing the ball well. You've got some hot receivers. I think you're just going to try to get vertical here. See if you can run by somebody, maybe. Oh. BB drops back. He throws it to Sheedy. And Sheedy is, breaks a couple tackles, and he gets a big game, but he'll still make it fourth and eight, fourth and nine. Almost had a man downfield there the center was close yeah it, it, was a, it was a weird zone. call was it supposed to be as was it supposed to be a screen maybe he, he was a little too deep for the screen sheedy is down on the play the fine running back linebacker for north this is going to give north a little bit of time to think about what is it that they want to do here it's going to be fourth and nine and hopefully we're not seeing anything significant for, for Cade Sheedy. Might just be cramping. Yeah, I'm no Dr. Joel, but that's a classic cramping pose over there. It's getting, it was, what, 74 degrees to kick off, but it was warm all day. Warm Some people just don't like water. So fourth and nine, 346 to play. Muscatine leading six to three as the training staff appears to be stretching out the calves of Cade Sheedy, who had the big run in the beginning of this quarter, took it down to the two-yard line, and on the ensuing play, a fumbled exchange, Muscatine was able to recover it at the one, get some positive yardage, then punt it away, and that's how we are here where we are today with fourth and nine as the Wildcats with a, with a decision to make here. Now, lots of football to be played here. This might be a punt situation, try to pin Muscatine back deep in their own territory. Yeah, I mean, I, it's certainly possible. I, I think that you know, you can make a case either way here. I mean, that would be the case I'd be trying to make as a, as an assistant coach. Sure. Well, and I think especially you know Muscatine is doing a lot of running, not a lot of passing. So the deeper you pin them, the more plays they've got to run to get the yardage they need. I think that's a very fair point. You know, you're looking at potentially a flip of about 19 yards because if you get that punt too far into the end zone, depending on what Peter Fan does, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But otherwise, maybe you want to roll the dice here. Your offense is looking good. You see if you can make something out of nothing. I, I don't know. I think punt's probably the smart move here, Joel. But I but again, I don't think it's crazy if you decide to go for it. And again, going back to the to the injured Wildcat, you know, again, the kid has been running the ball, been playing middle linebacker. If anybody's tired out there, it certainly would seem to be a prime candidate. So yeah. no surprise there he's having a little bit of cramping. He's been an impressive player. He impressed me last year as these two teams met, uh, as did Jack West. And certainly opposing teams were happy to see Mr. West graduate. But I've been really impressed with Zane Beebe, this quarterback. This is back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, we've seen two quarterbacks uh, that have been impressive in running their offense. Well, and again, if you're if you're going to run this kind of offense, if you're going to run the pistol, you got to have somebody that can throw, somebody that can run. That unlocks the whole playbook for that offense. Getting an update from our friend uh, Matt Koss, who is at Tuvel Stadium, Pleasant Valley leading 16 to six right now over Bettendorf. Bettendorf is Muscatine's opponent next week as they return home to finish out the regular season with two home games as Muscatine will take on Bettendorf next week and then Davenport Central uh, the following week. And then it's playoffs. And we'll have that all for you here on Discover Muscatine. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Facebook Live channel and the Facebook page, Discover Muscatine, your home for all things local news. I had some great coverage of the almost Friday Fest last night at the Muscatine Riverfront. Tremendous new lighting system on the bridge and down at Riverside Park uh, for great outdoor space for our community to enjoy. So fourth and nine, the appears that North is going for it. Dixon in motion. Sheedy looks to pass, and that is incomplete, deflected by Diego Rangel. Nice defense for the Muskies. Yeah, huge play by Diego, because if he doesn't put a hand on that, I think that's a catch. Cameron Stokes, the intended receiver. It, it wasn't a, a complete bat, but it changed its course enough to keep Stokes from being able to reel it in. So it'll be first and 10 for the Muskies from the North 40. Nice stand by the Muskies. 
3.36 to go in the third quarter. Muscatine takes over on downs. And you'd like to see Muscatine's offensive line get going again here, start opening some holes and put a nice sustained drive together and punch this thing in. Eli Gay at the quarterback position. He gives it to Nolan Ricker, who is met in the hole, and he fights forward for a gain of three. It looked like Nolan maybe missed his hole a little bit there, saw an opening and went for it, but uh, was not able to use his pulling guard and tackle as much as he might have liked. The Muskies looking to put some more points on the board, second and seven. Three minutes to play here, here in the third quarter. Gay gives it to Nimley. Nimley with some nifty footwork. He's able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, and you got to hand it to Davenport North. Every time Tim's touched the ball tonight, they've found a way to get three guys around him. And another Wildcat down on the play. Looks like it's maybe Jaden Noriega. Number 21. There's a, quite the pile up there on that play. So hopefully everything's okay for that young man as the teams come to their sideline while the, the North training staff tends to the injured Wildcat. That's going to set up an interesting third and seven for the Muskies here. Again, you really, really would like to see us move the chains and get some positive momentum going forward. So, you know, likely we'll, we'll run some kind of read play here um, with Tim and Eli and hopefully they can make the right read and bust something forward and get that first down. The Muscatine offensive line, again, kind of shuffled around here in the second half after the injury to Caden Roberts. And again, hopefully everything's going okay for Caden. Xander Stolswiss, Togan Deason at right guard and right tackle, respectively. Cruz Schliesman anchoring the center position all season long. And then you mentioned uh, Edwards and Brockert uh, finishing out the left-hand side. Uh, Wrecker also a fine blocker from his tight end H-back position as well. This this running uh, attack for Muscatine for the last three weeks, uh, it seems like these guys enjoy that physical play and kind of just getting downhill and, and getting into the defense. Well, and, you know, Wrecker's a kid too who you got to give some credit to because I'm sure this wasn't exactly how he imagined his his junior season going. You know, sure in preseason and stuff, getting a lot of balls thrown to him and splitting out wide and getting big target, very soft hands. Um, but really does a nice job mixing up inside. And, and uh, you know, we've seen a couple times tonight and certainly throughout the season of him being a pivotal linchpin in some of those big plays by getting a key block on the edge. And that is the senior linebacker, Jaden Noriega, it appears to maybe have injured his arm on the play, so hopefully that young man's okay. So it'll be third and seven for the Muskies. Gay a quarterback, Nimley a running back, Ricker in the backfield. Nick Peterson checking in at a tight end. It's going to be a quarterback power. Eli Gay bounces it outside. Stiff arms a man. He's going to be tackled just short of the first down. Eli Gay on the keeper. And I think this is a situation where you're going to need to punt. I agree. Field position is important in this type of a ball game. And here comes the punt team for the Muskies. Let's see if Davenport North likes to put somebody back this time. Peter Fan going back. As the North faithful encouraging their guys to key the ball, that is important too. If offsides penalty would make it a first down for the Muskies. Snap is back. Morgan Oof. must have tipped it because there certainly was contact. And that's going to get down inside the five-yard line. Smart heads-up play by the Muskies there. Yeah, don't gamble and, and try to, to to cheat it all the way down to the goal line. No, and the just senior back deep. the senior mentor Cooper knew that and was able to just say, hey, that ball's the five. Let's let's pop that thing backwards a little bit and go. So it'll be North ball at the seven-yard line. Again, yeah, North looking dangerous on special teams, though. They almost got that one, Joel. Yeah, I, I, they did. I don't know if they got a piece of it, but or if they just determined that it was a musky player who hit the punter. Because even a running into the kicker on that situation would have resulted in a first down. I was a little surprised to see North go after it like that. Minute yeah. 52 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I, you know, I, as a defensive coordinator, I always like to do punt safe and just get the ball back. Yeah. But sometimes it makes sense to try to get that block, and you've had great success on special teams and help your offense out. BB 
He gives it to Hill. And that Hill is wrapped up by Nick Peterson and company. Did that look weird? Yeah, it looked, that looked weird. like everybody was moving about just a split second before that play started. That was very unusual. It was a little odd. Might have been a slow snap there by the old center. Well, we saw a no snap by the center in the first half, so I guess it's an improvement. BB, he's going to give that one to Hill as well, and Hill runs right into the teeth of that defense. One of the things interesting, too, is with, with the, the injury to Roberts and TD having to play both sides, he's getting a little bit of a break now. So he's checking back into the ball game now, but took, had a couple plays there North had to have, be able to run without him in the game. Well, Anthony Sanchez showing his versatility, too. The guy who plays a lot of linebacker for the Muskies has played defensive tackle and defensive end tonight. BB rolls to his right. Looking downfield, he finds Wiseman. Wiseman just working his way on the drag route. Nothing easy around George, though. George <laughs> smashed him out of bounds. <laughs> he likes to see a little bit better coverage, but if you're gonna, if you give up the play, at least make the guy realize you were there. And another hit on BB as well. He's he's had he's, he's had to throw under pressure all day long. First and ten for North, just over the twenty yard line. Fifty six seconds to go in the third quarter. Jet sweep to Dixon, and he's met by Rangel. Good job by Rangel there to come up and make the play. Josh Thomas also scraping across from his inside linebacker position, able to assist on that tackle. Yeah, Rangel did a nice job of setting the edge, forcing him to cut underneath of him, and then he shucked and shed and was able to take him down. Linebackers, or I mean, wide receivers must, they don't, that's a tall task to ask him to block that outside linebacker. Yeah, very quick kid and surprisingly powerful. BB and Hill in the backfield. They give it to Hill, and Nick Peterson says, no, sir. Well, and give credit to the whole defensive line there. I mean, every single gap was stuffed up. There was nowhere to go, and he chose to go where Nick was, and Nick made the play. Great job by Nick and that, that whole defensive line. That is going to be the end of the third quarter. We've played three here at Brady Street Stadium. Scoreless third quarter, Muscatine leading 6-3. to three. We'll be back after some words from our sponsors on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. There's no place like home, and Eastern Iowa Community Colleges is our hometown college. With the security we need to explore, learn, and grow, it's the smart choice, always delivering quality, affordability, and flexibility. Because now, more than ever, there's no place like home, and there's no place like Eastern Iowa Community Colleges, the Communities College. Welcome back. It's the fourth quarter here at Brady Street Stadium. We're just getting started. It is North Ball, third and eight at their own 24-yard line. Muscatine leading North, six to three. And man, this has been a defensive struggle really since the midpoint of the second quarter. And this is going to maybe come down to the strength and conditioning programs of these two, pro two schools to see who's got the most gas in the tank and down the stretch. Absolutely. And of course, head coach DJ Hawkins is strength and conditioning coach at Muscatine. Um, so hopefully that helps us out a little bit here. Zane Beebe drops back to pass. He's got some pressure. The pass is almost intercepted. I think that was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Reed Olsis almost had his first interception of the year. Nice job by the Muskie D. Bring up fourth down and putting the Wildcats into a punt formation. Excuse me, that was Josh Thomas with the near interception. So Peter Fan in to punt for the Wildcats. Diego Rangel back deep for the Muskies. Done a fine job tonight catching the ball as the deep safety on punt. Fan with the punt. That's a high short kick. That's a call. Peter, and get out of there. 
Alberto, what are you doing? He's, oh. got, he's gonna return that. That's Giorgio Campo. Thought he had some daylight. That was all. <laughs> oh, that's will make your uh, your stomach yeah, drop. No, absolutely. <laughs> Senior trying to make a play. Shades of Iowa City West there. Right? It's very scary when guys <laughs> start to freelance like that. Well, it was no harm, no foul on that. <laughs> no. And a good field position for the Muskies for the, their first possession of the fourth quarter. As old Rob Rub would say, no bueno. <laughs> Muscatine takes the ball over at the north 30-yard line, 31-yard line. Gay gives it to Cooper. We've got a flag. I believe this is an illegal formation. Yeah, that's going to come back against the Muskies. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. It looked funny from up here, and the flag, I think, just confirms it. So 11.39 to go in the fourth quarter. That'll make it, I think, first and 15 for the Muskies. That five-yard penalty. Looks like there were, there was, yeah, there was, there were only six guys on the line of scrimmage. Well, and that's always real frustrating as a coach. Those procedural ones where guys don't get properly aligned. So Eli Gay, a quarterback. Mentor Cooper in a running back. The give is to Cooper. Cooper with a cut and gets vertical. He's going to get about four yards and continue to push the pile. Mentor you know, will not go down. The thing I've liked about Mentor so much this year is if you see when he is getting into the line and getting into the hole, he is so low. And it allows him to be very explosive. He can plant his foot. He can go different directions. He can bowl through guys. He just does a really nice job of compacting himself, getting down and low, and being able to to, to do that. And on that run, you know, he's decisive. He found this, he saw his, the seam. As the late, great Gail Sears used to say, all you need is 18 inches of daylight and you can make a big play out of it. And Cooper trying to find, find that daylight on those holes. Eli Gay on the quarterback power. He goes over the right side and he has just tripped up. That was maybe a big play saving tackle there. Can't see the number on that young man. That might have been, yeah, that was Zane Beebe, the quarterback and safety who may have had a touchdown saving tackle there. A nice call by the Muskies, getting some different guys in the backfield there, just bringing a lot of a lot of extra horses to one side and let your athletes be athletes. Third and six for the Muskies at the Wildcat 27. Gay's going to keep it. It'll be close. It's going to make it fourth and one. This is definitely four down territory, I think, for the Muskies. Yeah, going to be – I don't know that we're going to want to trot the kicking game out with just as good of a job as Davenport North has done against us. So feels like this is one you want to go for. Fourth and one, 9.45 and counting left in the fourth quarter. Muscatine leading six to three. Maybe try to get them off sides here even. The give is to Cooper off right tackle. He's going to have the first down and more. Breaks a tackle. Drives down to the 10-yard line. It's going to be just outside the 10 in the first National Bank red zone. Goes Muscatine. And uh, perhaps more importantly, will be first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Still another opportunity for a first down for the Muskies. I'll tell you what, Joel. The first five yards was all about the offensive line. The last five yards is all about mentor Cooper there. Gay goes quick. Gives it to Cooper over right tackle. He's tackled. Oh, no, he breaks it loose. He's back over the left side, and that's a fantastic no gain. Yep. Ran a 400-meter no gain there. <laughs> so just under nine minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Muscatine trying to add to their three-point lead. Second and 10 from the north 11. Chris Fox would love that. Run, 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 and just end up where you started. Fine cross-country and track coach for the Muskies. Eli Gay takes the snap. He's going to keep it after the fake to Cooper, and Eli Gay in for a touchdown. Touchdown, Muskies. Great job by the O-line there. I mean, Eli is quick and did a great job hitting the hole, but there was a heck of a hole there because I don't think a blue shirt touched him on the way into the end zone. Yeah, fine play, and I think we're in a two-point conversion situation here trying to make that lead 11 as the Muskies add to their score total with a big 11-yard run by Eli Gay. Second time in the end zone for Gay today. Yeah, looks, you're right. Looks like they're going to go for two here. I think that might have more to do with lack of confidence in the kicking right now. Eli goes out wide right. 
and he's going to try to carry a defender into the end zone, but that's going to stop short. They're not blowing the whistle, though, and now they blow the whistle dead. No good. The scrum was on. <laughs> Or, sorry, the mall. The mall. The yes. mall. I'm getting, my, I'm getting all sorts of rugby education this season uh, with the rugby expert, Ben Nitzel. 8.42 to play here. Let's, we're not going to go to break here. Let's keep it here. That's a huge touchdown for the Muskies here with 8.42 to play when yards and points have been so stingy to come by. Yeah, for sure. You know, and you had the big fourth down conversion, and then you, you're able to get down and punch it in and really put yourself in a position to win this ball game. So the Muskies add to their lead. It's a nine-point lead, still a two-possession game. 8.42 to play here in this fourth quarter. North, you know, they, they were so close in that game last week against Bettendorf. It was 0-0 with eight minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And then Bettendorf scores three touchdowns in the last eight minutes of the game. You know, these, you wonder if there's some ghosts of a game's pass as they start to see maybe the close game slipping through their hands. Well, yeah, probably ghosts of decades past, to be honest with you. But I, I think that, you know, the nice thing the North has going for them is these are these, they have quick strike capability. This is a team that can, they can get a big play over the middle and all of a sudden they're, they're running in the end zone. So, you know, this is not, you know, this is a dangerous spot for the Muskies. Love to get the touchdown, but you got to keep your eyes on the... Excuse me, that's Tyson Hill, excuse me. So Tyson Hill with a nice little return off the short kick. It'll be good starting field position for North as they trail 12-3 to with 8.37 to go in the fourth quarter. And again, great field position here. You've got an offense that likes opening him up. You've had some success with throwing the ball. Um, you know, it, Muskie defense has done a great job. I like the position we're in here, but again, North has got to feel like they they're right in this ball game. They're a big play away from from being right here. No, and you mentioned the athletes and the explosive play potential of North. They've got several guys who can go to the house on any play. Then you got some height down here on the on the bottom of the screen. Final Pleasant Valley beats Bettendorf 23 to six. It's going to be a false start on North, so that's going to push him back. First and 15. You know, I've got, I've got some nightmares as a defensive player for the Muskies with Marquez Simmons playing for North back in the late 90s. That guy was a house call in the making. 4-2-5, 40-yard dash, went on to play at Nebraska and Iowa. And uh, there's some athletes on the field like that for North tonight as well. Maybe not that fast, but they've got some speed. First and 15, 8.37 to go in the fourth quarter. The swing pass is out to Dixon. That's incomplete. That's a backward pass. That's a fumble. That's a loose ball. And it is musky ball. Reed Olsis gets on it. First down, muskies inside the red zone. Huge turnover as they've been flirting with that all day long. Yeah, it's just a little bit of sloppiness from North there. It's not the first time that's been a backwards pass. And you just... You know, you play with fire, you're going to get burned on that deal. And you got to make sure that, you're, that your running back gets wide, but he's also got to get upfield. That's on the QB a little bit too. Can maybe take another drop back and make sure he's throwing that ball forward because it is a long pass. It's, it's a swing pass, but it's a long way to throw, a long way to catch, and you just see that more often than you would think. So a huge turnover for the Muskies. 8.29 to play. They'll take over in the red zone presented by First National Bank of Muscatine, and they get some more help. That's going to be a false start. And that'll be another five yards for the Muskies. So first and five. That's a big break for Muscatine. Absolutely. Huge turnover. Eli Gay and Metro Cooper in the backfield. Nolan Raker as well. They give us the Cooper off right tackle. He breaks the tackle, bounces it out. And that looks like number 27. Amir Lomas with a nice tackle in the open field. Well, Lomas, a nice job out there, exactly like you said. I mean, I think, you know, Mentor Cooper is going to run through a lot of guys right there. He hangs on, brings him down, and, you know, yeah, nice gain for the Muskies, but it could have been a lot worse for North if the kid doesn't make that play. So the clock rolls under eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Muscatine leading 12 to 3 as they're in the red zone again, challenging for some more points. Eli Gay keeps it, breaks a tackle. Spins out of another one. It's going to be just short of the first down, it appears. It'll be third and less than a yard. 
as Muscatine flirting with the goal line again of Davenport North. Well, Crucial Eastman put the big hit on his quarterback there, trying to knock him forward for a couple extra yards. I think he's the guy who actually put him down. Great hustle by the center to get downfield and be able to try to participate in that. Clock continues to run. We're under 7.25 to play. Muskie's running with the tight quarter. end there at the top of the screen, Joel. Quarterback power, Eli Gay gets the first down and then some. That's going to be first and goal. Down to the three-yard line goes Eli Gay. Well, and they take advantage of it, too. you got Nick Peterson in there at tight end. You run to the strong side where you've got more gaps and put this this five front of Davenport under, under pressure. Quick count for the Muskies right back up. Little quarterback draw again, maybe even just the same play. And North stacks it up, so it'll be second and goal. We're inside the first National Bank red zone. 6.50 to play here. And they actually may have lost a yard on that play. So it'll be coming from the four. Muscatine using the clock. Still 20 seconds to go on the play clock. A lot of power to the right side. Eli Gay goes right behind that right guard and tackle, and he's going to find the end zone for the third time tonight. Xander Stolzwitz, Tongue and Deason, Nick Peterson and company paving the way for the third touchdown for the Muscatine quarterback. Well, great job by the Muskies capitalizing. You got to feel for the Davenport North kids. You think maybe they just should play hockey. <laughs> 6.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Muscatine 18, North 3. Extra point team on for the Muskies, Diego Vitale with Connor Christensen to hold. We'll see the kind of push North gets. I mean, they've just been gangbusters off that edge all night. High snap. The kick is up. And it's good. Much nice quicker, job, Diego. Quicker nice job, there. Diego. Great kick. So that kick is good. Muscatine leads 19-3. to 6.30 to go in the fourth quarter. We're going to take a break. You're listening to Muskie Sports and the Muskie Sports Network. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. You're going to want to go check out Bark Chiropractic's new location on the corner of Second and Pine in Muscatine. Whether you need a basic, athletic, or accident injury treated, have a specific body problem such as back pain, leg pain, arm pain, or a spinal condition, need pain relief, or just want to improve your overall health, and no matter what your age from infants to adults, Bark Chiropractic may have a solution for you. Call to make an appointment today. They're excited to see you at their new location on the corner of Second and Pine in Muscatine. Muscatine. Welcome back to Muscatine Muskie football on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. 6.30 to go in the fourth quarter. A huge touchdown for the Muskies. Take a 19-3 lead. And Ben, that's, that's just what the doctor ordered for Muscatine. Getting a turnover deep in their own territory and punching it in for six. Yeah, for Muscatine, I mean, that's the ideal situation. You Davenport North starts off with good field position. The backwards lateral. Uh, kid doesn't jump on it, you know, which you, you preach that as a coach from day one. If, if you're not sure, get on the ball. Doesn't do it. Muskies pick it up. Reed, Reed also grabs it. First down, Muscatine. Then you go in, you punch that ball in off a couple nice runs behind that big offensive line. Nick Peterson comes in to play tight end. Run to that strong right side with Peterson. Stolfus and TD and uh, set up the touchdown and again just take all the wind out of the sails of this Davenport North team who has played really well. It's had a nice defensive game and and uh, you know I know that wasn't the sequence they were they were hoping for and as you said a little bit of shades of of last week where the fourth quarter just kind of just kind of bites them. Yeah, when you talk about winning the turnover margin as a coaching staff, Muscatine right now leading the way. They have three takeaways. Now the offense has given it away twice, but so far the Muskies staying on that positive side of the takeaway mar the turnover margin. Well, one of our turnovers was end of the half, throwing the ball, you know, third and forever, similar to a punt situation in some ways. And so short kick by Vitali, see if it stays inbounds. It does. And it is caught and then returned out of bounds. That was Hill, I believe, Tyson Hill. That's a tough spot for him. He's just tracking the ball, and it kind of hopped right up to him. Yep. And, you know, you think, well, just let that ball go out of bounds. But maybe it doesn't bounce that way. It's right. tough to tough to tell. Yeah, he, he, he got the guaranteed field position, so it'll be north ball 
at their own 18-yard line. First and 10, 6.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Muscatine with a 16-point lead, 19-3. Trips to the bottom of the screen here. Zane Beebe, a quarterback, had a nice game so far. Drops back to pass. Pressure from Peterson. He breaks free, and Peterson's going to, excuse me, Beebe's going to tuck it and go. Nice scramble by that young man. Yeah, looking down to the trip side for something to be open. There was nothing there. Pressure came, and he just tucked it and went. Very decisive. And again, kid has been impressive all game. So I'll make it second and two with the eight, or second and one with a nine yard scramble for Zane Beebe. BB looking to the right side. That's going to be completed to Griffith for a first down. Nice little job there. Ran a little bit of the, uh, just a quick little out there and got the ball and got the first down. Final Pleasant Valley has defeated Bettendorf. BB drops back to pass. Ooh, dangerous pass over the middle. And that falls incomplete. And what Muscatine's doing a lot better job now than they were earlier is you're getting a little bit more depth from the linebackers and you're getting the safeties to compress up a little bit. So instead of being back at 18, 20 yards and creating a big gap inside for them to get that pass, now it's a much smaller window. You're seeing the ball get tipped, guys in position to make interceptions. It's great, great uh, adjustments. BB sprints out right, looking downfield, and he finds... That's Cameron Stokes. It's going to be close to a first down. And how about that hit from Georgia Campo? I mean, if he if he doesn't come up and just blast that guy, that's a first down. George just took all his momentum and re redirected it backwards. And they did give him the first down, actually. It was right at the sticks. Yeah, but Cameron Stokes with a nice catch, but he may remember that one. Yeah, really impressed with George's hitting tonight. 5.30 and counting left in the fourth quarter. BB drops back to pass. Pump fakes. Looking for some help. Scramble drill. He's got Griffiths deep. And Ooh. Prince Wee with some nice coverage. But Griffiths almost able to cut back under and make that catch. Well, tremendous job by that kid of readjusting and, and getting out there. And, I mean, that looked like that was going to be pick six time for the Muskies. And he got underneath it. And if he doesn't slide out of bounds, he's, that's a catch. Very impressive from the young man from Davenport North. And he did a nice job of adjusting his route when he saw his quarterback scramble. That was a well-executed scramble drill. Zane Beebe back to pass. He sprints out left. T Tongan Deason with the pursuit. Here's David Oh, Watson. snipers all over the place. Now Beebe's going to tuck it in and just try to, to get a yard, but he's pushed out of bounds by Reed Olsis. That'll be a loss of one. Look like we're going to get the big sack, and Muskie's just started dropping. <laughs> The good pressure from the Muscatine front. Absolutely. Giving BB no choice. Well, and as soon as that quarterback has to start running for his life, you start you start making that defensive coverage a lot easier because where he can throw and where he's able to contort his body becomes very limited. BB back to pass, swings it out to Cade Sheedy. Sheedy in the open field. Ooh, nice. He's going to get another first down. Nice there. extra effort by Sheedy there. First of all, nice to see the kid back on the yeah. field. And secondly, he's just been, a, just been a workhorse all night. Great job of individual effort of getting that ball and turning that into a first down. I don't know what his plans are after high school. He mentioned in senior night he does want to continue playing football. And I think there's a real future for him at the next level, depending on where he lands. He's an impressive player on both sides of the ball. BB back to pass. He's got TD pressing him. Throw back across the middle. There's Wiseman. He's going to stay in bounds. Muscatine trying to strip the ball. And that's going to be another by, first down. That's a play by Reed Olsis. That's what you coach there. You got three guys around him. He's clearly momentum is getting stopped. He's, he's going to be tackled. Get a hand in there. Go for the strip. Try to get that ball loose. Create that turnover. So the Muskies with uh, on defense, first and 10 for North. BB back to pass. Ball's tipped and intercepted by Wanty. Wanty's going the other way. And that's another takeaway for the Muskie defense. We got a little fighting out there. And Bar Barcolot doing a nice job just trying to block the O-lineman. Separates, gets back to the line of scrimmage. What a pick by David Wanty in the trail position off the tip. Well, and again, compressing that zone in which they can throw the ball. They know that sweet spot. They want to throw that ball 12 to 15 yards deep. That's where they've been getting hit all night. They've done, a, like I said, a great job of, again, David Wanty coming from the linebacker position. If he's going to get that pick, that means he's widening. He's getting a deeper drop. Those safeties are up a little bit tighter. Pays dividends for Coach Hawkins' defense. Get the big turnover. 
So the Muskie offense will come on the field. 4.19 to go in the fourth quarter with a two-score lead, 19-3. The Muskies are ahead. The give is to Cooper. And Cooper is going to gain about three yards on first down, keep the clock rolling. At what point does North start to use some timeouts? And that now is the time. So North calls timeout with 4.08 to play, trying to preserve as much clock as possible, trying to get the ball back in this two-score game. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to step away for 30 seconds on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. And we're back at Brady Street Stadium. Muscatine, Musky football. Muscatine leading 19-3. to Now, North did just call a timeout. They do have an injured player on the field. Now, Ben, did they get their timeout back in this situation? I don't believe so. Looks like a cramp situation for one of their alignment who is a two-way player. That's number 68, uh, Devontae Hicks, who's had a nice ball game. So it'll be second and eight for the Muskies with four minutes and eight seconds to play. They haven't taken the timeout off of the board yet on the scoreboard, but they've had some other issues up there. So I'm not completely relying on that for my for my information. 4.08 to go, 19 to three. The Eli Gay leads the Muscatine offense back onto the field. Prince Wee wide left, Nick Peterson tight right. Beatty split wide right. And the give is to Cooper. He goes over the right-hand side, and Cooper breaks a tackle. Breaks another one from BB. Now he's in the open field, down the sideline, over the 30, 20, 15, 10. House call, Mentor Cooper. Great job by Mentor there. Got some initial blocks and then just did the rest himself. A little high step away from a tackle. Hit X on the old joystick, and away he goes. Great job by that kid. That is a 56-yard touchdown run. For Mentor Cooper, that's a that's a backbreaker. Oh yeah. Coming out of the timeout, 3:55 to play. Muscatine expands their lead, 25 to three, with the extra point went coming. You can almost hear old Coach Teal yelling, "He gone." <laughs> that's offsides. Finally, <laughs> Makai Jacobs with a little little jump. Got to give him credit they're though, guys. To, hustling. They're trying to time it out. Make a play for their team. That's, a, that's an effort mistake. It's all good. So we'll get another yard for the Muskies. Make that extra point just one step closer. Well, Joel, you brought up the point about, you know, conditioning and strength and those kind of things. And I, you know, I, I think you've seen from the Muskies a really just great tempo and, and really have had gas in the tank. Diego Vitale, that kick is blocked again. And so it'll be a no no good extra point. I know I've made this reference before, Joel, but it really does look like Tech Mobile Lawrence Taylor out there. I mean, they are in yeah. so fast, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Quinn will, uh, will get More so than the Amanda game. I mean, that's those guys are coming. Wiseman off the edge. That's his second blocked extra point of the night. Can you get a scholarship to be an extra point blocker? Uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> he's gracious. Well, and he's had a fantastic night as a wide receiver. Oh, yeah. Very talented kid. And I, I, I've seen him on the basketball court, too, as we do the Muskie basketball games uh, throughout the year and that's going to be that season's going to be here right before we know it as well but we're not wishing away this football season which Muscatine looking to go uh, get their second win of the season tonight leading 25 to 3 with 355 to go here in the fourth quarter as everyone's trying to peak as the playoffs, everyone makes the playoffs this year due to the, the scheduling changes. Uh, seven regular season games and then a guaranteed playoff game. Well, or is it eight regular season games. I'm seven. Seven. Seven, yeah. you're correct. Um, and, you know, like you said, I mean, I think teams are gearing up for, you know, trying to get ready for that. And we talked about that at the opening of the game tonight of, you know, what what's working well? What do you need to improve upon? Are there guys you want to try to get some experience and get into the game? And, and how can you get ready? 
So Diego Vitale will kick off. It's another short kick right around the 20. That's taken by the up back, Giovanni Rivera. Rivera gets out over the 32, right at the 32-yard line as he's taken down by who else? Giorgio Campo. He's been everywhere tonight. Yeah, he really has. The whole defense has really done some nice things. Coach Hawkins, who also leads the defense, has to be really happy with what he's seen tonight. Yeah, they've done a really nice job. I mean, you know, they've given up some yardage for sure. But when they needed a big play, when they needed a key turnover, they've been able to get it. They've been able to force it. They've been able just to make the play. And uh, that's really been the difference maker. I mean, you know, North probably should have had two more touchdowns. That opening drive and that drive down there, and I think it was in the fourth quarter, they were right on the doorstep, and the Muskies were able to, to shut them down both times. That give is going to be to number 23, it looks this, like. This might be a hold, too. I mean, yeah. we might be going first and forever here. Dominic Johnson in the backfield. Excuse me, that is Giovanni Rivera in the backfield. Then we do have Nolan uh, Nolan Mosier back in at quarterback. So the sophomore quarterback in. Zane Beebe may be done for the night and, and didn't go how he wanted to on his senior night, but that young man is a fine football player. And yeah, he played really well. I mean, he's played very well tonight. They've really done some things well. And, again, a couple key turnovers the Muskies were able to get. Otherwise, this, the complexion of this game is much different. So it'll be first and 20 now for North from their own 23-yard line. Excuse me, their own 18-yard line. Mosier fires it out wide left. It's going to fall incomplete. Intended for Kanye Garcia. You can see why they are trying to get Mosier some snaps early in the game. He's got a big arm. Future is bright for that sophomore. Yeah, I mean, this is the time to do it, too. You, you never know. You may need him a little bit in the playoffs. And so. Mosier sprints out right, throws an out route, just falls incomplete. To Cameron Stokes, or excuse me, that's Alec Brown, the, the typeface of these numbers for North, the sevens and ones from the distance. Yeah, it's been very stylistic <laughs> for about the last 13 years. It's thank goodness for HD cameras. We're actually trying to trying to scout and, and re review film back in 2006. It was like unbelievable. It was like trying to decipher hieroglyphics sometimes. I appreciate you watching on the Facebook watch feed. You can comment along throughout the game. Nice to see Ty Schleesman, Cruz's brother, watching from afar and commenting on his younger brother's performance. The swing pass is complete. Yep, Diego Rangel will hear about that on Monday. Wrap up and drive through. Giovanni Rivera is going to make it fourth and 24, 25 for North. We're just under three minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Muscatine leading 25-3. It's really been a, a, a start to finish fine performance from this musky defense. Oh, low snap bobbled by Fan. Oh, he's in. Oh, and he kicks it. It hits the hits no, his own guy. He was in Neverland there. That's that was a, um, tough. That is a a tough way to to end that possession for the Wildcats. And again, you know, it's an. I'm obviously as a Muskie fan, it's great. But the last eight minutes for for Davenport North have been really tough for these kids. I mean, they played through the first three quarters and change, played exceptional football, really battled and put Muscatine really up against the ropes here, and just had some issues here at the very end. But so North turns it over on downs with the. I guess that's technically not on downs. It's a punt, but they lost two yards on the punt. So the Muskies will take over inside the first National Bank of Muscatine red zone with 2.37 to play. Eli Gay still in a quarterback. Muscatine leading 25-3 as the Muskies look to just salt this one away. And we're going to have offsides. Tyson Hill coming from the edge. He flinched and into the neutral zone. So make it first and five for the Muskies. And you can hear the musky students from across the stadium. Well, and here we go, Joel. I was wondering, I was a little surprised to see Eli come out and get that snap Connor, instead of Connor. Connor Christensen now in at quarterback. Eli gave us a 
appears to be done for the night. Mason Crabtree takes the handoff off right tackle, and Crabtree's going to go to the house. No, oh, he wants in. Oh, we got a flag here. They're going to call holding, I believe, on Beatty. You're a good spot there, Joel. So that's kind of that's a bad beat on that. It, it was the right call, but it was one of those things where it wasn't an egregious penalty on Beatty. I, I saw it. It happened right in front of the ball carrier. He just was engaged, and he got a little extended. And actually, the North player did a nice job of of making it look more like of a hold than what it probably was. I'll be, I'll be shocked if, if Crabtree doesn't get his touchdown anyway, Joel. Looking at body language, I think that guy is itching to get in the end zone. That give us to Crabtree again off right tackle, and he's going to battle his way, try to get that first down, because even with that penalty, it was still first and five. Forward progress is going to be just short of the line to gain. Many trips to the First National Bank of Muscatine Red Zone tonight for the Muskies. They're looking to finish this one off with six points. 2-0-8 and counting the play here in the fourth quarter. Just been living in, in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Muscatine running that that end of game offense where they're using that play clock. Such a big advancement in the last few years of uh, these stadiums now all having a visible play clock for these quarterbacks, making it so much easier to run this offense. Give us to Crabtree over the left hand side. He fights his way. He's a first down for sure, trying to fight his way into the end zone. So they'll make it first and goal with a minute 39 to play. Well, and you know, it's it's nice when you they are really nice to have and be able to 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 view and watch. You know, I remember the days the stopwatches, and boy, nobody gets more nervous with 15 seconds left on a playcock than old <laughs> Coach Jake Mueller. Well, that guy you, just starts sweating blood. And you've got, and hopefully, Coach Mueller doing well with his new position at Cedar Falls. But you had that assistant coach who has the stopwatch, who's pointing to another coach, who's then signaling into the quarterback when to go. Now it's much easier to manage. Christensen going to give it to Crabtree, who cuts it back over the left-hand side. He's going to be tackled just short of the goal line. It'll be second and goal from the two with just under a minute to play here for the Muskies. So one more snap mathematically for the Muskies here. Did you see if Crabtree can find pay dirt? I know he's smelling blood. He'd love to get in that end zone. You could just see a kneel down here. Yeah, it looks like we well. might do that, yep. Classy move by the Muskies there to finish it out. Takes a knee, so that's going to roll the clock down. They're going to respot the ball, and the play clock will not need to tick for the rest of this game as Muscatine is going to win this game. 25-3 to is the final 15 seconds roll off the clock. And the Muscatine Muskies move to two and three, riding a two-game win streak. And with these teams, again, the, the, it's so you used to like to end these games with the handshake, but unfortunately, you can't do that anymore. Uh, and uh, so the teams exchange waves and good luck and congratulations as the season moves on. And Muscatine with a big victory here, 25 to three. We'll be back after a little bit with our post-game show presented by Pearl City Media on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today you're going to want to go check out Bark Chiropractic's new location on the corner of 2nd and Pine in Muscatine. Whether you need a basic, athletic, or accident injury treated, have a specific body problem such as back pain, leg pain, arm pain, or a spinal condition, need pain relief, or just want to improve your overall health, and no matter what your age, from infants to adults, Bark Chiropractic may have a solution for you. Call to make an appointment today. They're excited to see you at their new location on the corner of 2nd and Pine in Muscatine. 
From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Get on a roll with Pearl City Construction, the local experts in roofing, siding, gutters, and more, where you always work directly with the owner and where homeowners don't pay out of pocket for deductibles. Whether you're planning home improvements months in advance or you're hit with sudden storm damage, you can count on Pearl City Construction to deliver reliable, on-time repairs and installation. Hi, I'm Rob Wadden, owner of Pearl City Construction. Give us a call or visit us online, and remember, homeowners don't pay out of pocket for their deductible. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Now we're back at Brady Street Stadium. Joel Krausar, Ben Nitzel, as the Muscatine Muskies defeat Davenport North 25-3. to It's the Discover Muscatine and Pearl City Media postgame show. And Ben, really what a fine performance from the Muscatine uh, football team in all three phases of the game. Special teams on the punt side played pretty well. They have some things to work on on the field goal unit, but they have to be really happy with how they performed. Yeah, and I would say on the field goal unit too, to be fair, I, I just think that was a case of Davenport North just being really, really good uh, as opposed to not saying anything that we weren't doing well. Yeah, I thought it was a nice job. You know, they hung in there. It was 6-3 to three dog fight. Muskies just kept going, kept plugging away, kept doing the basics, making plays when they needed to be made, and then they were able just to kind of use their conditioning there at the end to pour it on. Nice job by them to get a big win tonight. And the offense played so well. The offensive line, again, I think only – there was no completed passes, I don't think, for the Muskies today. 25 points. Well, there was America. one, but unfortunately it went to the – to the Wildcats, That's not true. to the Muskies. The interception. interception. So our offensive player of the game, presented by Bear of Muscatine, is going to go to? Well, you know, the easy pick would be Eli Gay with his three touchdowns, but I think, Joel, we got to go with Mentor Cooper. I mean, I think the kid had big runs. I mean, of course, the big power run for the touchdown, but big runs when he had first downs when they need to be made and really looked dangerous every time he had the ball in his hands. So Mentor Cooper, our Bear of Muscatine offensive player of the game, and the defense winning the turnover battle four turnovers for the muskies four takeaways our defensive player of the game presented by eastern iowa community college highlights all over the field joel but i think from start to finish george ocampo coming up with some big hits making his presence known and doing a nice job adjusting throughout the game where maybe the hitting was great early on the coverage was so so clamping down on the coverage a little bit taking away those those uh post routes that north wanted so much to get completions on great job by george all the way through calling his name all night long you know and some big plays some explosive plays you know big run by mentor cooper as you mentioned a rivo inc plumbing and heating play of the game had to be the interception. Prince Wee, Prince Wee with a huge interception there in the first series for Davenport North after the Muscatine turnover. Intercepts at the 10-yard line, returns it all the way to midfield, and that really kind of set the tone for the Muskie defense. They, they kept North off the board. Muscatine was able to drive down, score the first touchdown of the game, and really the momentum stayed in Muscatine's court that whole ball game. Well, and that, that initial drive on North, it looked like we couldn't stop anything. They were getting some outside runs. They were getting some swing passes they were getting some passes down the middle I mean it looked like they there was no doubt in anybody's mind they were going to score big pick by Prince getting the nice return as you said changing momentum changing field position and really changing the texture of the game right from the onset and the Muskies will return home next week to host Bettendorf as Bettendorf comes to town Bettendorf fell to Pleasant Valley tonight and what sets up a nice matchup between Mississippi Athletic Conference foes Bettendorf uh, bringing in 
some uh, they always have quality players they always have quality linemen uh, they have one of the top players in the state of Iowa Griffin Little who is a committed offensive and defensive lineman to the Iowa Hawkeyes a heavyweight wrestler it would be interesting to see that battle in the trenches between uh, Muscatine's uh, offensive line and, and, and that Bettendorf defensive line yeah I think this is one of the, the better top to bottom lines that Muscatine's put out there in a while and so seeing how they do against Bendorf is going to be a really great fight great competition obviously Bendorf's going to come in knowing we want to run the ball uh, and so it'll be interesting to see if they can impose their will and stop that or if we can impose our will and move down the field and score some touchdowns those are fun people to play against it's always uh, I always liked it when I had a, a stud lining up across from me because it made me measure myself a little bit so Bendorf comes to town and uh, we hope if you can make it to Muscatine Community Stadium given our, our restricted guidelines and the, the restricted uh, attendance that we can have in our stadiums if you're one of the fortunate ones who's able to come as a friend or family member of the program looking forward to seeing you there if not thanks for watching here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network we'll be back with Musky Sports next week and stay tuned the best way to know the schedule check it out in the Discover Muscatine newspaper and also make sure you like the YouTube channel and the Facebook page you'll get alerts whenever there's a live event going a huge thank you again to our sponsors healthy smiles family dental first national bank of muscatine rivo inc plumbing and heating bear of muscatine eastern iowa community college river rehab physical therapy pearl city construction and muscatine community school district uh, that's going to take it for us here at brady street stadium i'm joel krausar ben nitzel thanks for doing it with me have a great night everybody